Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Blue Morning Show. I hope you all are doing well. Today, we're going to talk about some transfer news, and then we'll talk about the status of this uh, current status of the sales of the club, and also we'll talk about the game uh, versus West Ham United at the Bridge. So, let's get into it. Yes, people, welcome back to another Blue Money show. Uh, but before we continue, as usual, I'd like to take a sip of my coffee so I don't uh, slip off during the shows because it is 3 a.m. here. <sighs> yes, thank you very much. It's a good one. And I am happy to say that, as, as usual, I have a Nick in the house. Nick has, uh, he, he has a very good understanding of the club, the situation, and the transfer that we're going to talk about. Nick, how are you doing today? Yeah, fine, coach. Yeah, big up to everyone in the chat. Yeah, yeah fine. Yeah, yeah. bit uh, sad about what Tuku said, but that's mm. you know, talk about that, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, overall, uh, you could say we could argue it's a it's a it's a very good morning for us, given that uh, we won that game because it would have been a uh, a serious co confident destroyer had we lose lost that one. But uh, fortunately for us, our boys did well. Uh, they got us a win, and, and that will go a long way given what we're facing. Um, the, the, the sales of the club seems to be a process that's never ending. We're, uh, we just thought a few days ago that we were going to hear the news. At the end, we heard nothing. Uh, so before we continue, I'd like to go through the chat to recognize the presence of those that are there already. Uh, we have... Uh, 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 um, Phantom of many topics saying uh, uh, Broken's uh, Grill Christ, Humphreys, Buyamba, Max Lynn, Duelian, Pick One. I, uh, the only person I know very well there is Buyamba. The other side, I know. And Kronos Dan says, Hello, Kachila. Hello to you, Kronos Dan. How are you doing, brother? Nice to see you here. And then uh, my brother. My brother, Green Top, one of the biggest, uh, biggest, one of the biggest Chelsea. You know, Chelsea, our uh, 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 YouTube channel in the community, always nice to see you here. And sorry that I disturbed your sleep, but at least you are ahead of me. So you probably, it's probably money in your area. And if you haven't, if you're watching already, I know we have just have a few people yet. Go check out the green tough. And also we have Colonel Stein saying, wow, 3 a.m. You're de de dedicated. Uh, uh, what's your thought about AC not starting? Uh, uh, stomach cramps again, uh, cramps again. A flashback to when Asari was in charge, no matter why, he's been shocking as of late. Yeah, well, I think we should talk about it. Uh, Andreas Christensen, uh, somehow I'm happy that he's leaving. Uh, he's always facing one issue or the other, uh, so I'm not surprised that he has a stomach cramp, but on his day, he can give you 150%. But I am just uh, surprised that... <laughs> I'm just surprised that, that yeah, the, uh, uh, what happened it was hilarious, though. The mix-up in the lineup was hilarious. But Andres Cristanza, I don't think, you could argue he's injury-prone, too. Uh, he gives you uh, uh, five consecutive performances, and then, boom, he gets injured. Yeah, it, it was hilarious. And then the Queen herself, uh, nice to see you here. I hope you're doing well. Uh, uh, we haven't seen you in a while. I hope everything is okay with you. Just amazing, happy, both men. And, and ladies, yep, kick, kick bots. Yes, they did. Good wins for us. Uh, we could do, uh, that would go a long way. Hello, boss and the Chelsea fan. Hello, Quinn herself. Quinn of all streams. I hope you're doing well. Nice to see you back again. Tots, he was pregnant. <laughs> he was pregnant. Yeah, that's hilarious. Uh, Nervy Christensen, a blue morning. Blue morning to you, Olupol. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing well. I think he's nervy. Yep, I think that's the case because most you know, so, uh, more, more often when you hear that he's sick or he got stomach cramp or something like that, it's usually when a big game, a very important game, 
he, he usually gets those uh, cramps. But that's by the way. I do think AC's uh, uh, stats. We are losing uh, that game. Well, maybe God has a way to serve. Us. God uh, found a way to serve us by you know making sure he's not fit enough to start. I'm not wishing him bad, but nobody wanted him to start. That's just the truth. Uh, any update uh, to the owner situation seems to be dragging on. And you know, I just want clarity over our future. We'll talk about it in a bit. Uh, but we'll start by talking about some of our transfer news. Uh, the good thing is that, uh, <clears throat> let me see if I have uh, something here to show you about it. Uh, I will find it in a bit. All right, uh, Juice Kunde, I think Manchester United wants his signature too, but he prefers Chelsea. He's already made of its mind that he wants to join Chelsea Football Club, and, and that is good news for us, given that we're losing uh, quite... Uh, we're, losing, uh, um, uh, we're losing Antonio Rudiger and Andreas Christensen. Why, why Kunde won't be a direct uh, replacement for Rudiger, I think... He will do well. I think the only thing they have in common is this ability to run with the ball from Chelsea's half to the opponent's half. Uh, Nick, I want to get your thoughts on the fact that Kunde uh, says um, that he prefers uh, Chelsea and has made up his mind to come join Chelsea Football Club. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean it's from last season. He wanted to come last season. Mm. Yeah, we delayed it. We didn't, you know, it didn't work out last season. But uh, mm. yeah. He does. He he's, he's desperate to come to us, and I can see that happening in the summer. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I see pe some people arguing that he's uh, he's going to replace uh, what's his name, Antonio yeah. Rudiger. That's uh, I, I don't think we we'll ever get another Antonio Rudiger. Uh, Kunde for me is more aligned to the way um, Thiago Silva uh, uh, plays than Antonio Rudiger uh, because he's a, he's he's really good on the ball. And for his size, he can leap. He can leap. Yeah. He's good aerially and can score some good goals with his feet and also his head. Uh, but yeah. the truth is, he's never going to be another Antonio Rudiger. And unfortunately, we were helpful and we argued, uh, rightly so. Objectively, we'll look at, um, we'll look at uh, some of the reasons why we believe Antonio Rudiger will remain at Chelsea Football Club. But that did not happen uh, uh, again, I, I, I'm st I would still say maybe I'm in denial, but I still have hopes because uh, uh, he, his contract will not with Chelsea will not end until I think around July um, or so. And again, we've seen people finalize, say they're going to one, cl one club, and then at the end, boom, they, uh, they stayed, at, uh, they moved to a, a separate club. So that has happened before. Nick, your thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah, like you, you know, I'm just hoping, you know, he doesn't go. He's we got, he's got to the end of the season. Don't forget. Mm -hmm. Let's hope, you know, is this new owners? They delaying everything. You know, if if we find out a, uh, a new owner soon, then Rudiger can you know can have a choice because I'm sure they're going to offer him a good contract here at Chelsea. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, he wants to stay. He really wants to stay, but you mm -hmm. know, he's the future and you know i can't i don't blame him at all you know yeah it's not his fault he's like i said before his agent is pushing this maybe try trying it on uh, mm -hmm. to get out of chelsea we don't know but you know it, it's very hard but you know yeah. we have we still have a chance to make him change his mind nothing's impossible we went all right tuku said he looks like he's going, but he hasn't signed the dotted line yet. To that, mm. to, to he, you know, if he signs that, that's it, he's going. But no, you know, even I'm, if, it, again, we've seen, for instance, uh, uh, like yeah. I said before, for instance, William was on his way for a medical mm. at uh, Tottenham and yes. then decided he, he prefers Chelsea. So that can still happen. So the miracle, he has the only hope now. Plus every other factor we talked about yesterday, we, we because we were objective, we were truthful. Those are the reasons yeah. that we think he he may well still come to Chelsea. I think one of the only remaining very strong reason now would be new owners wanting to do something out of the ordinary 
to our peace terror yeah. fans, it could still happen. But that's by the way, we're not gonna dwell on it so much. So let me go through the chat and see what people have to say there. And this is five points clear of Arsenal with a game in hand and seven up from the scorm. I think that is a huge news. And I like it when the Queen says something like that because Arsenal, to me, I knew uh, after that, believe me, they were still, still, they were still struggle. Uh, they destroyed a weekend of Manchester United. And uh, believe me, uh, Arsenal struggle against teams that defend deep. So I haven't had the time to look at their remaining games to see if they will play, still play against the teams that defend deep. For me, I think they've won their trophy for the season, which is beating Chelsea. That's, that's a trophy to Arsenal. That's why you see them. Uh, where the, there is the form, their form before we meet, get that thrown out of the window when it, once it's against us it is a different a story altogether so I, again we'll see what happens um uh, let me see what everybody has in the chat so that great comment there by the queen herself i see the boss with rice <laughs> yeah um, again um here's my argument for rice uh for even if we want him for that amount around 150 how much again do they say west time i ask uh, asking i think it's too much um I don't see uh, uh, that happening for that price. And again, from Rice's own perspective, is Chelsea the best place for him? Forget what people are saying uh, about N'Golo Kante. Look at the way he performed, even though he was fasting. And probably, I think, I don't know if at that time that the game was, was played, if he, 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 most, he, he more likely played on an empty stomach. Correct me if I'm wrong. So I don't think Chelsea will let N'Golo, N'Golo Kante go. His uh, price as... That is his uh his priceless to Chelsea Football Club and man I I I don't see Rice from his own camp they will look at things and know that uh, Chelsea he will play but he's not going to get the chance to play uh, play as much as he wants but at United he will get a chance to play as many games as possible given that they don't have a defined defensive midfielder but then again that's me uh I seen seen Rudiger and Andres to Real Madrid make make me sick um. Uh, yeah, Andres Christensen to Barcelona, Rudy got to Real Madrid. That's how it is. Uh, it happens. Yeah, it happens. Yep. But at least out the country on the good side. Yep, he is on the good side. It wasn't his fault again. And, and again, the only thing I don't like is to see people br uh, blaming Marina on the fact that he didn't, uh, you know, he hasn't, uh, they did not offer him what he, uh, what, what he was asking the club. It's a huge risk. It's a slippery uh, slope, if you ask me. It sets a dangerous precedent. Already, the clubs' are wages for players are everywhere. Uh, uh, bringing it to, uh, to control uh, will take a whole lot of work. Uh, Nick, quickly, I'll come to you. So you talk about, you know, the fact that the club didn't give him what he wanted. Uh, what What you think about that? So here I have um, Chronos Dan says that you think we could hopefully wrap up a third by end of next week. I think that's a possibility. Again, it, uh, if you look at it mathematically, I think it depends on all the results from elsewhere. It's not just about us. So uh, if yeah. Arsenal keep winning their game and Tottenham keep winning their game, then it has to. It, it, then it will go down the wire, which on which is until uh, I think it's two games left or so, because we're just six point around five points above them. Uh, eight uh, to hit the like. Thank you very much. I appreciate that and congratulations to you. Uh, Rudiger told TT bye bye. Yep, I think he said that, uh, but I still believe anything can happen. 90 to 230K, he wants to stay. Now, nah, I don't think so. No, but we are offered him around that number two. So, again, uh, it's nobody's fault. Uh, I wish him well if, if eventually he leaves because I'm still hopeful until the end of the season, until the transfer window, you know. Uh, with the wages we we save, we can we can get someone nice. We can get someone nice and even younger. And no player is bigger than the club. Uh, our players are, are replaceable, so that's important to to uh, know. Um, says a phantom pick pick for what? <laughs> there are others who are ahead of those kids. Okay, good 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 uh, comment there. Uh, the thing is, you cannot blame a Rudy guy. Yep, you cannot blame him wanting to leave he wants security and we are currently not that we need owners in quick and fast again a lot of stuff uh, contributes uh, contributed to the situation the way it is uh, the restriction in place because we were close to wrapping up the new contract until the restriction uh, restrictions hit us and the sanctions also so we weren't able to complete the deal so that nobody is to blame for the situation and i know he loves the club deep down 
Uh, again, he has to go for what's best for him, given the fact that he's, uh, he's entered uh, his 30 plus right now. I think so. I don't tell me. Uh, I, this is the best opportunity for him to get the best deal for him. Just hope the new owners signed uh, our two brilliant players. So, uh, you know, yeah, I think they will. To talk up to us, yeah, I think they will. Uh, uh, True Blue, those are kids who plays as, yeah, he knows that, but he's just saying some of, so we have some other players who are better than them. I will be honest, next season, Chelsea are much closer to a top four battle than a title chase too. Uh, many players need a replacement. Honest got a tough challenge ahead of them. We will see what happens. Um, let me see here. Okay, uh, so you would a peek ahead of okay. I said, yeah, yeah, forgetting Ampadu is a brilliant uh talent, uh, possible winger. And if a good buy season, yeah, we should get a winger too. I can see them extending the sanctions to allow time for new owners. Uh, for the putting us, yeah, I think we're going to talk about that. And big up to my fellow American, uh, Jose CFC, and big up to Bobby. Uh, uh, where is the link? I will add the link to the chat, uh, in a beat. And again, it's time. And this is CFC Blues, he's 29. Yeah, thank you very much for that correction. Let me share the link so that uh, whoever wants to join the panel can kindly do so. So, Nick, your thoughts on uh, what was it again? There was something I was going to ask you about. Uh, we've thought, have, have I uh, asked you a question about Kunde? The fact yeah. that he once uh, prefers Chelsea to Manchester United, yeah. that he'd already made up his mind to come join us. That is some good news. And that oh, on its own will reduce the price tag yeah, cool. you know, to yeah. a very, very considerable measure. Your thoughts on that? But the truth is, he's not going to be, it's not going to be a replacement for our. Uh, um, What's his Rudiger. name, Antonio Rudiger? No, no chance. We can't replace Rudiger. Mm. Just, we buy it. Kunde is a, a good player. He loves. He wants to come to Chelsea. He's been saying it for since last year. Mm. So, well, I, I love players who want to come to our club. You, you know, it makes it feel better. Mm. And uh, he's a good uh, defender, and. Um, and he can score, like you said. I haven't watched that much of him, but what I've watched, he's good. And um, yeah, yeah he, welcome. I think we he he we coming. Tuchel really wants him. I think he's he could be our first signing. And, yeah, uh, and I, he, I, he is aggressive too. Yeah, he's aggressive. Yeah. Mm. I just want to um, some uh, someone said about the the game last night. Um, you know, um, you know, we, we, the, we, 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 yeah. we will get to the game. We will All get right. to the game, Nick. Someone mentioned something about, um, was it about Rudiger? I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah, the Rudiger look, yes, you know, for me, until he signs and he, he actually goes to Madrid, I have hope. I so, yeah, I yeah, have, yeah. A lot mm. of people, I'm mad, I'm stupid saying, uh, saying I have hope. I'll, you know, but I'll, I'll do. And a lot of people mm -hmm. saying he, he's not a Chelsea legend because he hasn't been here 15 years. For me, he's a legend. You know, yeah, everyone. If you has... ask me, I think I'd, I'd count him as a legend. Uh, he's won yeah. Champions League. He's won. That's yeah, the cool. only thing he's... he hasn't won with us, I think. Um, he's won everything with us. And for me, he hasn't he's won a... the league with us. Has he won the league with us? I don't know, but I'll check that. Yeah. But I think the Champions it's... League alone and the Club World Cup, I think those are huge. I uh, think um, he... 2017, wasn't he here uh, under uh, Conte? Mm. I'm sure he was. And, um, yeah, if for me, you know, I just hope he changes his mind. The new owner comes in and goes, hey, what do you want to give you that? I'll give you a double it or something like that. I'm it, so it, hopeful. Maybe it, people can it, call it, it that I'm still I'm, know, I'm in denial, but that's by the way. Go yeah. ahead, Nick. He doesn't want to leave this club. He, he said it, and we know he doesn't. But you know the circumstances. As, you know, I like this now that you know he wants to make sure his future is uh, cemented. Mm -hmm. Only thing. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm going to come to you, uh, Bobby. Welcome to the panel. It's been a while. I hope everything is okay with you on your end. Yeah, it's good, um, Coach. Uh, I uh, sorry, I can't stay too long. I'm working. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm. I just saw you as always. If I have a minute, I try and jump on, say my piece. And um, I understand, brother. 
Yeah, I, I, your thoughts. I want to ask you, do you think there's still a chance Rudy really stays? I know Thomas Tuchel said something about it, him saying goodbye and, uh, and everything. But we've seen a situation where we thought players are leaving, they stayed. Uh, a prime our top players is joining Club A, they join Club A. A prime example is William, who's already on his way for a medical at Tottenham, but yet moved to Chelsea. The new owners, uh, you know, might as well see they, they need to do, if this is something, if we do it and it's drastic, it may I well, we may get, you know, win over more people to us or get, let it, see it as a way to show the fans, look at how serious we are. We, we made the impossible possible and it can still happen. Your thoughts? Yeah, um, you know, uh, we're in such a, a, a horrible situation at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't really been talking Chelsea since the Arsenal game. Uh, mm -hmm. I did a bit of security last night, actually, reluctantly, because I didn't even want to be in, around the club because of all the stuff going on. But, you know, when you get there and you're in uh, into it, you start having... I wouldn't, bl I wouldn't blame you. Mm -hmm. But, you know... <laughs> There's a, there's, there's a whole load of issues here. One of which, you know, we've got to be honest. I don't know, we live in a world where we're so afraid of being labelled non-politically correct that we, we don't hold people accountable. I think part of this problem is an awful lot of hesitation on the part of Marina. You know, this should never have even gone this far. Not to mention got to the point where we're close to the end of the season and then the whole sanctions taking place. Then the sanctions to this day, I'm still confused as to why it ever happened in the first place. I don't see the relevance of it to anything apart from just disrupting Chelsea Football Club. And now we're in this situation where, you know, it's hoping against hope in a way. It's a very, very faint chance that this will be turned around mainly because we still don't even know who the new owners are. You know, fans, uh -huh. are, fans are drawing up a shopping list without a buyer. We have no idea. And this thing is still dragging on. So, you know, it, it's, 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 it's horrible. It is, a, it is a pathetic situation. It's a, 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 a case of mismanagement and then a case of the usual uh, aggression against this club that, that is quite bizarre. Now, you know, is any player bigger than the club? No, but you know, this guy, um, he he has quite rightly asked to be paid the going rate. He is amongst one of the best, if not the best, defenders in the world at the moment, mm -hmm. and that's a very high price. He's a man in a very short career who not only wants to secure his future but secure the future of his family. So, of course, there's a there's a business element from his point of view as well. I believe he loves Chelsea. I think he's dragging his feet as much as it's no, practically... No question, no question. Yeah, he's dragging his feet as much as is practically possible for the new owners to come in. But you can't blame him for having an agreement with Real Madrid because that's protecting himself. And now also, it's also increasing his price because any new owner coming in would have to pay more than the 230 mm -hmm. Get K mm. a week he agreed in the first place, plus the sign on fee that Marina refused to give him. It's, it's crazy. You know, now, whatever, now the repair for this guy is probably going to cost us twice as much. Because you see, what a lot of people are forgetting is that to get a, 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 um, a, a prized asset like Rudiger, it takes time. Rudiger spent a number of years in the Premier League. When he first came, came he was not quite what he is now but it took mm -hmm. it takes time and you see rather than have Chelsea as I put out on Twitter rather than have Chelsea now be in a position where they walk into a period of sustained success a dynasty if you like yet again we're going to have to rebuild because Lou Rudiger's gone Christensen as much as he's a lesser valued defender he's still part of that unique defense system and he's going and then we've get again got um uh tiago silva and aspi only on a year extension each and please god let them be fit and stay for that year because whoever comes in is going to need bedding in time thankfully the process has started with chalabar but uh if it's jules Sunday, if it's whoever whoever 
they're going to need time to get abreast with the Premier League, the sheer number of games Chelsea plays in a season. And that, you know, I think it was a very, very, very bad mood whose move, whose foundation came from Marina right from the beginning. There was a lot of poor decisions made at the beginning of the season in relation to um, the squad. You know, the squad depth wasn't right. The signing on of, of, of contracts to players isn't right. And please, God, let the new owners, when they come in, their first job, to me, even before even talking about Rune, Rudiger, is calling Thomas Tuchel into a room saying, listen, please sign this extended contract upon your extension. We want you here another eight years. And, you know, and then we build from there. Yeah, I want that. So I don't think they give him an eight-year contract. They may extend his contract on some. It, it all depends on if he wants to stay. But then again, I I I, I love you, Bobby. Yeah, but the truth is, I think we, we have to be cautious on how we say it was all Marina's fault. Again, if you look at the, the Chelsea wages, uh, uh, the way it is, the structure is everywhere right now, and it's it's dangerous. So I think I don't think it was that simple. Given Rudiger what he wants. Uh, I think I was watching, I watched, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, uh, Blue Lion TV. He made a previous video where he blamed everybody, blamed the marina. And then he did his, his research and came back, find out that it wasn't necessary, really necessary blaming marina for all those things. There were all the reasons why this, you know, happened as it did. Yeah, should the club have gone, uh, tried it? Yeah, the club, remember, if you remember, Bobby, uh, even before the club tried it to talk with them, I think Rudiger was interviewed on occasions about his Chelsea future. If he had already started talking with the club, he said, no, he didn't want to talk right now. He's not bothered about that. He wants to wait until after the Euros. And then the club, even the club went to him and tried to get him to, to bring him to the table. He said, no, after the Euros. So the, the delays were in 100% the club's fault. On his part, maybe because of his age, Maybe he knew from time that this is uh, the perfect opportunity, an opportunity for him to get the best contract that he's, he would ever get in his, co in his career. And he, I don't blame him. The ball is in his court now. And then if, if, if he was by design, he did it quite well. So, again, it's that's your coach. opinion. And I have every right to argue that it wasn't Marina's fault. Go ahead. Coach, uh, I guess, look, mm. when you are in charge of operations like she is, you have to be held accountable. You know, we talk about him saying, yes, he'll talk after the, the um, Euros, but that's splitting mm. hairs. He had all the time before the Euros to talk, but we didn't want to talk to him because of injuries. Fair enough. And form, fair enough. But when we got back in the season, we gave him a deal that he didn't even look at because it was unacceptable. So instead of looking at this guy, and going hard and straight for what he would want, we, we started playing poker. You've got to have mm. accountability in things. You know, I, I don't subscribe to... I'm accountable for, for, the, for the work I do. I can't just get away with anything. You know, you can't just because, you know, f you feel some type of way. I'm not saying you in particular. You know, mm. No, no, I understand. In, I, I understand you're trying you know, to make a point. Yeah, about someone in a, in, in, a, in a very, very responsible and risky position like that and not hold mm. them accountable. I mean, I go back a long way. I remember when Man City came for John Terry, big time. They really came for him with, with an extraordinary offer at the time. And Terry, as much of a Chelsea guy as he is, his head was turned. Ron Gawley then had to act quickly and fast in order to, to secure Terry to, to, to a longer deal, and his deal was coming up, and to keep Man City away. That was even more pressure. There was very little pressure in and around Rudiger, apart from us striking a deal with him. But all this, all this you know, yeah, there is, there is the issue of the wage structure to be reviewed, but it doesn't help when you waste money, nearly 100 million, and 300 plus K on the center forward that doesn't do anything for you. And you see all these wastes, you get rid of players um, from the youth system that barely cost you a thing, 
and start bringing in, you know, people like Sal Niguez. I mean, it, there were some very, very bad decisions. That's all I'm saying. And being held accountable is not a life sentence. It's just pointing out that, look, in fact, people learn from accountability. You know, look, you've hesitated. This was not right. Let's not run away from it. Because it's only by acknowledging what's right that we can get what's wrong. We can get it right, I mean, going forward. That's mm. my point. Let's not yeah, be I get, no, I, Believe me, I get your point. Well. Again, that's why we're here. Uh, I, again, we respect each other, but we all have, in most cases, well, in some cases, sometimes most cases, we all have differences in opinions. And we're allowed to express it and learn from each other. You of know, course. is she perfect? No, I wouldn't say she's perfect. But again, my argument is that I, didn't, I don't think, I, I wouldn't blame her for the way things went because I followed the whole process knowing when the club was trying, when you, if you're asking, he said, no, 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 he's not in a hurry to talk with the club. And then again, that was a time he wasn't, he was in such a poor form, which you wouldn't blame the club. They're under Frank Lampard and Frank didn't help matters the way he treated him, the club wouldn't want to extend his contract since he wasn't even playing. I think at the time, he was, you could argue, practically ostracized. But that's, by the way, I get your argument, Bobby. And Frank, I appreciate Frank, also you. Has a, Frank also has a part to play in this. As yeah, much yeah, as the he way did he a treated lot of him. good. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But you know what? It is what it is. The club will get is, better yeah. and, and will survive. But um, yeah. I, I, I don't hide from um, saying, hey, you know, this is wrong. We've got this wrong. And Mm. You got this wrong, and um, th that is how we can improve in the future. In my opinion, you know that's in my opinion. I, I don't Again, think, yeah, you know, there's always should... something to learn from every situation. That's just the truth. You know, and again, that great, great input right there. Uh, now I'm going to come to you uh, if you don't mind, um, my uh, brother uh, Phantom. Let me quickly go through the chat because this is an interactive show. Uh, again, people, please listen to the Queen of All streams. She's saying 35 people watching and only 19 likes. We have 21 likes now, but let's shoot for 100 likes before the stream ends today. And for the Roman Abramovich tribute contest, contest, I think contest, we're still looking for two people to complete it. If you don't get two people today, we will do the draw today and use numbers to make up uh, for the other spaces. And then when we get those two people, we will fix them in for the eight quarter finalists. Uh, again, uh, if you want to be part of it, just stay and be part of the draw so you get selected. Uh, again, uh, hit the like button for my brother Tobago from the Madiba land. Always to see you here. Uh, remember when uh, here, uh, subscribe and uh, tickle the yeah, tickle the like button. I like that from the queen. Someone find me a job where I get paid two thirty a week. Yep, exactly. Uh, shameless border uh, again. Oh, uh, there's only one person I, I proudly call shameless. Then that's Uncle Bruce Bug that Bobby says is that like one of those uncles that every time that's a family gathering, he does something embarrassing to me. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, A Sullivan says, Why is everyone blaming Lukaku on Marina? Nobody knew he was going to flop. Uh, we haven't even talked about Lukaku today, so you got that shot wrong. You misfired there, uh, uh, Solomon. Uh, oh, Ray Allen is back. Yeah, he's back. Anyone who knows about knew Lukaku would flop, we haven't even talked about Lukaku. Why is that going to that place already? I don't no, know. I mentioned Lukaku. Okay, you did. Okay. I did, yeah. <laughs> okay, he scored 100 in the Premier League total. Uh, someone on... Uh, he has said that uh, Rudiger has plans uh, from a long time. I feel the same. He probably wanted to leave from some time. I, I not, not just wanted to leave. He wanted to make the most of what could possibly be the last chance for him to get a good deal because uh, his age, 29, is almost 30. And again, uh, you know, football is what he does for a uh, living. Football is how he earns money to put food on the table for his family. So I wouldn't uh, blame him for if he, if this was by design and the club also, didn't, you know, because uh, he was in a better position to negotiate and the club couldn't pay him what he wants. And he then ends up, if he ends up leaving at the end of the season, so be it. He has my blessings personally. Uh, he, I wouldn't say anything bad about him. Uh, Solomon, he wouldn't blame Marina if he can. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Marina. Is cheat on players, uh, is on player salaries, even on transfer negotiations. Is it cheat? Or you mean, uh, I think you mean cheap 
why shouldn't we blame Marina? How long has she been a dragging the issue? I think it's not that simple. Was the issue dragged? It was. But is it that simple? No, it's not. It's a complicated situation. And again, it got even more complicated after the restrictions and sanctions uh, hit the club. Like the stream, be when subscribe to the channel. Yes, says one of the queens of the stream. Do that, please. Uh, James, even see lives. So, yep. Yeah, uh, Chelsea in top four were there, and I hope we'll keep it till the end of the season. If anyone who knew about should have, okay, I, I, I'm talking about that Lukaku incident now. Big up a Chelsea perspective. Big up to you, Martin. Nice to see you here. You promised uh, Nick Blue that you were going to join, and you joined. Big up to you. I, I appreciate you finding time to join. I hope you enjoy yourself, that you want to come back another day. Uh, do you think uh, with the new owners, we will scrap the one-year deal of anyone over 30? I think already we've learned quite a lot to see that uh, I think that uh, uh, policy, I think it's dangerous. We've seen players over the age of 30 playing better than uh, players that are just 29. That are from India, early 20s, if you want to ask me, look at Luka Madrid, look at Karim Benzema, look at Thiago Silva himself, a prime example. That one is in, uh, with us. He is with us. So we're learning over time that age, football these days, age is a nothing, but just you need a mixture of youth and experience. And we've learned how good that can be. I think I would, if you ask me, if had Thomas Tuchel met William, Thomas Tuchel didn't meet William, right? He wouldn't let him go. He would make sure the club keeps him because William was such a fine player, but he looks like uh, this, you know, so you know, sensitive in terms of his emotions. It, it affects him so easily. But we, I think we let William go uh, uh, earlier than we should. Uh, True Blue here said, uh, Serbia for the 100. It, Time Roman wanted Lukaku. He sent his son uh, Akedi uh, to talk to Inter Milan. Here's my argument about this. Uh, uh, I think to, to to some certain measure, I will blame the scout because there's a structure at the club. Even if you're the owner, I don't think the club will complete the signing of Romelu Lukaku without consulting the scout and say, "What do you think?" And if Roman did, although I'm, I'm not there, I just this is my opinion. And if, in fact, he did consult them and they say, get him, then that's a big problem for me. Then they're just there to say, yes, sir, yes, sir, what do you want, sir? And that's not the job of the scout. Your job is to say, this guy we're getting, he's good, but it's not going to work for us. And even Thomas Tucker okayed it, like we learned a week ago or two, but that's not why we're here. We're not going to talk about that here. Uh, this is about, okay, now I'm going to come back to the panel. Phantom, your thoughts on uh, Rudiger leaving. Do you think there's a chance he stays? I don't think there's a chance he stays. If he went and told Thomas Tuchel he's leaving, he's done. Um, I don't blame um, Maria for Lukaku. Um, she was told to go get Lukaku, and she priced it out. She's a price negotiator, but I do blame her for losing uh, Rudiger. We should have just given Rudiger his asking price from the very beginning. And I said this uh, in, you, from the very beginning. Give him his price. Give a, If he wants Conte money, then you give him Conte money. If he wants uh, Werner money, you give him Werner money. Whatever he wanted, we should have given it to him because he's my number. Rudiger is my number one player, meaning if I can only protect one player to keep on Chelsea, I would have kept Rudiger over anybody else on the team. That includes Magolo Conte or Havertz or anybody else. I'd rather keep Rudiger than anybody else and then build around him and then go get forwards or midfielders or whatever goalies. Mm -hmm. um, I, I keep him ahead of Mendy. I keep him ahead of, you know, anybody. And I definitely keep him ahead of Marina. Um, since Marie, since I've been a Chelsea fan, if you give Marina a grade, you know, what have you done for me lately? She's in the B minus C plus range. And to me, that's not very impressive at all. So if she wants to go or if they want to kick her out, goodbye. Good riddance. I don't think she's special at all. Um, you know, I, I know that she's one of the rare females in that position, but we don't give points for that. So I'm not going to mm. give any points for that. Um, as far as the uh, Rudiger going, I don't think any Chelsea fan is going to blame him for leaving. It's unfortunate that the UK government decided to go to war on Chelsea and then block us from, you know, re-signing him. Because I think that in an ordinary world where um, Ukraine was not invaded, I think... Um, 
uh, Rudiger would have won the negotiation battle by now, and he would have been re-signed. As far as Andreas Christensen is concerned, I do not blame Marina for that, because Marina reportedly gave AC his asking price. So whatever he was asking for, they gave it to he him, and then the he backed post. out and said no. Huh? He moved the goalpost. Yes, exactly. So you can't blame Marina for that. And then uh, for that, you have to set up, you know, a roadblock and say, hey, we gave you your asking price. And then you move the goalpost. So, you know, and the AC is a slightly above average. He's replaceable. So, you know, mm. I'm not really worried about losing him and all. But Rudiger is a world class guy. And to lose him is, you know, just a travesty. So now what do we have to do? I think we have to give, um, I don't know what kind of talent we have in the academy or how many loanees mm -hmm. can play in the center back position. Maybe there's some midfielders like uh, Lewis Hall that can play in the uh, center back position. I don't know, but we definitely need to explore that now because we spent too much money on Lukaku. Here's uh, the thing. I'm going to go back to the chat. Uh, thank you mm -hmm. for letting me speak. No, as always, brother, as always, brother. And again, guys, be sure to go check out our Phantom of Many Topics YouTube channel. He has travel videos. I think he uploaded, finally, he uploaded some, uh, think, two long videos. I've watched one. I haven't watched the others. I even asked you if there were two, and I think you said, yeah, two of them. And I, you were asking me to check the dates, but I was sleepy when we talked about it. But that's, by the way, make sure to go check out Phantom of Many Topics. Again, here's the thing about... Uh, Rudiger finding a replacement is that we will never find another Antonio Rudiger. That's not even possible. That's not even remotely possible. But where I'm concerned is this, um, the defensive line of any football team is the most difficult uh, department to assemble. It takes time. It's more. Talk about assembling a team being a puzzle. That is, that's especially true when you talk about the, the defensive aspect of a team. Because this, that is the slightest misalignment in terms of abilities, in terms of um, how, how do you how do I phrase it again? In terms of uh, you, you know, just abilities, you have a problem. For instance, or when this, there's no complementary uh, when there's no complementary you know skills, you have a problem. For instance, that's the biggest problem with the Manchester United's uh, back uh, back line. They have all ball-playing defenders. None of them brings to the team what Rudiger brings, which is aggression, which is that, you know, aggression. You need to mix it up with ball-playing and aggressive players. But in the case of Rudiger, he's aggressive. He can, he's good on the ball. Again, I don't know how, what else to say about him, but it just we need a mix of ball-playing defenders and also one that is aggressive as Rudy guy because you can see what is what he can do. But that's, by the way, now we move to the next uh, topic, which is uh, the status of the sale of the club. And Bobby, uh, I'll start with you uh, before I go to Nick. Nick, if you don't mind, since Bobby says uh, he's on a time here and we'll be leaving soon. Uh, Bobby, we're hearing that it's like they're introducing another beating phase which is they want to find out, I think it has to do with something, uh, the restructuring of the stadium. But whatever it is, introducing another beating phase, you know, that on its own, you know, stretches the whole process. And the longer, I had a conversation with Mikhail the other day, the longer the process takes, uh, the, the more, you know, collateral damage, as Mikhail, Mikhail phrased it, we will, it will have on, on the club. Your thoughts, Bobby? I, you know, I don't know. As I said, I, I was sort of at a point where I'm just fed up with the whole thing um, because I don't believe we should be in this place in the first place. I can't mm -hmm. see the reason for it. If I could understand fully the purpose of the sanctions uh, and the objective of the sanctions, maybe it will rest easier with me. But for me, I just think the only outcome has been to destabilise uh, uh, inhibit and cripple Chelsea Football Club, which is bizarre, considering it's just a sporting entity. It's got nothing to do with anything, really. Uh, but that aside, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if this is true, if it is true, which is likely. I don't know also why it's needed. You know, maybe they feel that the there's no clarity as to the stadium development uh, part of the project proposals mm -hmm. that they have before them. 
um, you know, I don't know. It, it's 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 frustrating. Uh, it needs to be sorted sooner rather than later. Um, maybe because now, somewhere along the line, people have felt well. You know, part of the rush was Rudiger, and now that you know he said he's leaving, there isn't that much of a rush. I don't know. I mm. really don't. Um, but you know, I think there is a rush because we, this must be done before the um, end of the season uh, for financial sustainability of the club and mm. also for uh, the next season going forward. So is this true? Well, there's never smoke without fire. Um, uh, and the only thing I think could be giving it any sort of legs is a guarantee of uh, reasonable investment and reasonable... Um, uh, a reasonable project for the new stadium. Um, you know, that mm. in itself causes a lot of debate. Just, um, so just to give you more context, just to give yeah. you more context, and that will seamlessly help us get into the topic. It says, according to a source in the report, all three groups have concerns over the stadium redevelopment without moving the stadium, the sum done work. A source said they are all private equity guys and want to make a profit in the long run. No matter how glamorous the, the trophies are, the sums don't work without a move in the stadium if the deal is for £2.5 billion. Pounds. Well, I, I, I said this in one of your streams before, didn't yes, I? Yes, we talked about that I, here. I, yeah. know, I said, look, if, this, if it is not financially viable, to develop Stamford Bridge. There has to be a plan B because the plan B will be a cheaper option. There has to be. It's not even up for debate anymore. So sadly, you know, all this uh, pitch owners, this, that and the other, holding the club to ransom, you can't change your name. It must be at Stamford Bridge. Well, you have to take one of two choices bankruptcy, which is the reason for your existence in the first place, or progress, which is a move. And we're getting closer to that. And if all three are showing those concerns, especially after um, uh, paying 2.5 billion for the club, it's normal. And, then they, and know, they're not going to see, I, I they're not see a return as soon as possible. Yeah, I saw this coming. You know, fans aren't realistic. They look at the heavens and keep I'm forgetting that you need uh, a vehicle to get there. You know, it, it's not realistic. You know, looking at the cost of the only person that could have really redeveloped Stamford Bridge was Roman. And he was scuppered yet again by not being allowed into, con into the country uh, for, I think, some thing that went on with Russia or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he was scuppered. So, uh, that was the last chance. I really believe that was. I would be surprised if any of these guys are capable of developing Stamford Bridge with the high, soaring cost of inflation and with the high purchase price. It doesn't make business sense. And I think probably what they are looking for is for uh, the Rain Group to help them tell the fans that there is every possibility you're going to need to move stadium. That's just reality. I don't particularly like it, but you know what? For the sake of progress, I will keep my memories of Stamford Bridge and look forward to creating new ones in, in a location not too far away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, I, I think it's time to bring in Nick, then I'll go to Michael. But before I do that, I want to uh, plead with everybody in the chat or wherever you're watching from to please just take a second, take a second and smash that like button, uh, tickle that like button, as, as, as the queen of all streams would say. It, it goes a long way. It will trigger the YouTube algorithm to push the stream to more people or to those that be interested in this particular topic. And also... Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Let's get Tauti likes, says uh, uh, the Queen. Come on, we, I think we can do that. Uh, Chelsea is too big to stay at, at, at Forham Road. Again, that's your argument. With, there are lots of stuff to talk about. Uh, it says, I personally would hate to leave Stanford Bridge, but if need be, we must do that. If Yes, again, some, you know, change can be difficult, but sometimes you just have to 
you right. know, embrace change if that's what it's need, uh, what, what it's needed to, you know, achieve uh, progress. Uh, uh, doesn't care. Okay, uh, again, let me see. They said nothing there to address. And some question here from Michael Obika says, uh, "Who do you think?" Okay, I'll still answer this one. But for from Michael here, he's asking. He wants to participate in the draw for the Roman Abramovich trouble, uh, uh, tribute to get a chance to win one fifty dollars. We will do the draw today and select. Uh, I think we need two more participants to complete the eight quarter finalists. But that's, by the way, uh, Nick, coming to you, you know, yeah. we've talked about this, we've argued about okay. this, and I know how passionate you are about yeah. Chelsea staying at Stamford Bridge. Uh, that's no question. Uh, your, you know, your love for the club, uh, you know, nobody can uh, deny that. But the fact is, these are all, like I've read that. I'm going to read that again, Nick. Are, are you listening uh, to me, Nick? In their comments, I, I know what's going on. No, it's not a comment. Let, let me just read this again. Yeah. Something uh, important. It's... it's uh, what uh, that's what my research said. It said, according to sources, again, there's no way to tell if this is true or not, and that's probably the reason why they are introducing a new phase of bidding. Uh, according to sources uh, uh, in the report, all three groups have concerns over the stadium redevelopment without moving the stadium. The sum don't work. A source said there are private equity guys and want to make profit want to make profit we all knew that uh again that, that it wasn't like under roman that he doesn't care much about making profit they want to make profit in the long term no matter how glamorous the trophies are the sum don't work without moving the stadium if the date if the dealer is for 2.5 billion so this is about people who are willing to invest a lot of money in the club looking at it and saying, okay, how are we going to get our money back? And I think they're, not, they're saying mathematically, staying there, it's going to be very difficult. So, Nick, your thoughts? Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, no, no, yeah. no. Sorry to you. If you need time yeah. to go get water, go ahead, brother. Yeah. Whenever you come back, you go ahead. No, it's a question. No, no I'm all right. It's, uh, okay. Yeah. Look, for me, I'll still say this. And you can write it down. Chelsea Football Club will not leave Stamford Bridge. I don't care who comes in or what they think or what they want to make. Mm -hmm. They will move in Stamford Bridge. You know that's that's facts according to uh, to me and the football trust and the pitch owners. We're, we're no way we're moving. We already you know talked to these guys, all three of them, and the only reason they, they you know we the Chelsea supporters groups are accepting them. Because they want to, uh, the main thing is to redevelop the bridge. Mm -hmm. You know that was quite clear. Now all these sources coming out, uh, uh, you know, sources. There's nothing uh, true about this. You're saying, you know, what they're saying about uh, we have to move so so they can uh, make their money and all this. Look, if they redevelop uh, Stafford Bridge to sixty thousand, they're going to make more than enough money. Whoever comes in, they have to put money into the club. Before they make anything, you know, what do they want? If they don't like it, they can fuck off, all three of them. Uh, like, can we watch la language plot yeah. release, Nick? Uh, I forgot, sorry. I just no get a uh, conversation. I understand. We, we're not moving from Stanford Bridge. You, uh, Bobby can say, I know Bobby wants to say, preferably, everyone wants to say, but I don't give the option to move either. No, not for me and not for thousands like me. Mm. You know, impossible. <laughs> that, that, that's not going to happen. So I don't know, you know, you're just talking, wasting your time talking about it because it ain't going to happen. How, Nick, can I ask you this? How sure are you? Remember, on the Roman, there was a time they agreed yeah. to a move. When yeah, the but train station, when the train, what is it called? Uh, the train, uh, uh, yeah. I forgot how you call it. Uh, but yeah. is it Bat Batista trainers? Battersea Power, Power Station. Station. Yeah, yeah, when it was up, yeah, they agreed yeah. to it for a move. He agreed, but then he realized the fans really want to stay. And the Roman, no, he was the whole thing was abandoned because the, the I think the, the place was sold to a Chinese firm or something like that. Uh, okay. that wanted that paid more money. The main reason was, was the fans were against it. They didn't know what wanted to the bridge, and that's why Roman changed his mind anyway. All right, you know, they, they didn't give the plans all right. That's just one reason. 
There's more into uh, more into it than that. And I keep saying, you know, we chose we would never move from the bridge. And that's also your, you know, these sources, whoever they are, that's all talk. You know, too much of talk going on. This this guy, Broughton, Pagluka, Baldi, they all agreed to develop, de redevelop the bridge when they come in. That's what they said. So, yeah, I don't know what, you know, all this sort okay, of... I, I get your but, argument, but the, here's the thing, Nick. I, I love you, brother, but the truth is we have to come to terms that uh, this no. is no, that we're moving from Roman Abramovich era. These oh, guys are, profi are profit focused. No matter how you see it, they may be passionate, passionate. Uh, but the yeah. first thing first, for, first thing for them is okay. If I put in a dime into this, how am I going to make two dimes? First of all, Roman won't choose. He's going to choose the one who wants, you know, what Roman wants and wants it. <laughs> Is that, yeah, um, the Will Roman choose the, the what's best for the, for, the, for for us from from what what's available? He has to make yeah. do with those the three. That is, if Pagluka stays, but we'll talk about that later in the show. Yeah. Here's the thing: Roman will choose from what he has. He will not risk because if these guys come, as we're saying that, that the three of them are concerned that the numbers don't add up, that spending that much money yeah. and then just end up only redeveloping, uh, redeveloping within the confined space or, or the space available at, at, at Forham Road at this point, yeah, that it doesn't make uh, uh, yeah. investment sense or business yeah. sense. These exactly. guys are going to say, uh, we're not going to do this. Because if you argue, if you ask me, I, I'll tell you probably because we knew how profit yeah. focused the Ricketts family were right. even yeah. before it got to this stage. I'm coming. We knew before, and I'll let you talk, Nick. Uh, that probably one of the reasons why they ran away were probably they look at the criteria for the final phase and say, um, if this is the case, we're never going to make enough money here. Yeah, I'd argue that that's probably one of the reasons why they ran away, but go ahead, Nick. Yeah, look, so if they redeveloped, uh, redeveloped the bridge to 60,000, it's more than enough. We mean, well, if they want to go and make a 70, 80,000 stadium, that ain't going to fall up. No chance in hell. We'd be lucky if we with, with 60,000. You know, you, know, you have to think about these things. You know, the, the Chelsea fans will go to matches. There's, it's not that many. It's not 80, 70, 80,000. They won't fill it. And we're not going to fill the redevelopment, uh, redevelop uh, to 60,000 every single game. You're going to get 60,000 mm. big games. Mm, we, 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 mm -hmm. I no. think we'll talk more about it because uh, the good thing I like about this uh, panel, yeah. the panelists we have here, you, my, uh, Bobby, and everybody else on the panel, we we argue objectively. Everybody see things, you know, present <laughs> their argument, and we'll look at it. We we'll try to come to a sensible conclusions. Conclusion Wait if that is even possible, because I know we're, we're all so passionate, but at the end of the day, even though we learn something from each other, we go yeah. home with our opinions without yeah. even you know, yeah. changing a bit, but I love yeah. the most important thing is that we all love Chelsea Football Club. So I'll go to Michael, then I'll go well, to yeah. Matt, and I want to come back to Bobby uh, about with another question. Go ahead, uh, Nick, you were saying something, brother. I haven't even finished yet. You, you always interrupt me when I'm... Oh, sorry, I didn't know. I didn't know. Go ahead. Yeah, look. Mm. And, uh, say, all right, say the worst come to the worst and they, this uh, owner, Bowley or whatever, or Broughton, I think you'd be one of them. Mm. They, you know, they're going to want to move out. Are they going to uh, want to lose uh, uh, thousands of fans as well? well that's what's going to happen. If they want to go and build a stadium outside Fulham Road, that's what's going to happen. And Chelsea, you know, will stay at Stamford Bridge, and they will stay at the bridge. Even if we have to get relegated, We, I prefer to stay at the bridge. I don't care what uh, this... Uh, Money grabbing people want. They want to go and make money, go and build a hockey stadium or baseball stadium. At least hey, yes, 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 the Nick. Go ahead, but you were still talking. Go ahead. You know, you know, it doesn't make sense, and we're completely against it. It's a, uh, there's more against it than uh, for it in our fan base. That's another oh. thing. Okay, I'll still come back to you. I like you. I like your passion. I like your spirited. Uh, uh, you know imputes to this whole conversation. Uh, Matt, uh, welcome to the panel. Uh, yeah. Hi, hi Matt. Matt, Matt, can you hear me? Hey, Matty. 
Yeah, yeah Matty, I, just yeah, just be a patient, uh, be patient with me. I'll go through the chat because this is an interactive show, and then my hope Michael talk because he was on the panel before you. Then I'll come to you, please. All right. Okay. Yeah. Go for it. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, now, uh, Tobago says I have a question. If Todd Bali wins, uh, will it be an issue if Claire Lake Capital owns sixty-six percent of the club? Besides us saying a decision will be made equal. I don't think it's an issue. Uh, the, where, the, where I think where that uh, comes into play is the, uh, uh, it, what it has to do with whatever profit they make, you know, from uh, from whatever sales of uh, you know whatever profit they make is where that that percentage comes. Since it is it is stated clearly that decision making will still be fifty fifty, so it's not any issue. It's not a problem at all. Uh, again, Strip says it is not personal enough for me, but okay. I uh, love to see the fans given the chance uh, to hug players. Uh, again, that's, uh, yeah, maybe co uh, since co uh, COVID has subsided, I think that goes a long way. And before I continue, if you haven't, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and more importantly, do not forget to click on the bell notification button so that you get notified whenever we go live. And again, if anybody asks you uh, to pay before you like the video, tell them strip beer. And uh, Josh Viola had already paid for you. Uh, uh, again, Tottenham Stadium, it's a dead compared to the last one. Uh, as, as, as Arsenal, uh, Arsenal, so again, uh, people, I, I'll put a poll out. Uh, the question, can you, can any of the shortlisted beaters, two or three, drop out during the advanced stage? Yeah, you have, nobody, it's, you're not held to ransom there. Uh, for instance, the Rickets dropped out, they, they, you know, they 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 say that maybe they can't do this for one reason or the other, one of which I think probably they think we're not going to make enough money out of this, so it, we're better off get the, getting out of it. So something like that. So, uh, But that's, by the way, Michael, to you. And again, uh, before I go to Michael, I want to let you know I'm highlighting your inputs. If there's any need to address whatever you say there, we will look at it. Again, there are so many comments uh, to go through. Uh, I think option is if we go to Wembley or uh, 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 for some season and we complete. No, okay, that's again if you want to uh, re redevelop uh, where we are and rebuild it. Okay, I get your option. I get your input there. Uh, something about the CPO. I know the CPO don't want us to move and um, play games elsewhere in the meantime, but it is probably the only solution uh, again for people that are profit focused. They will consider that. But before they even decide they want to redevelop where we are now because their profit focus. Uh, Lewis Hall is a midfielder. Nice uh, uh, research factor. <laughs> okay, good argument there. Um, again, uh, let me see if there's anything to address here. Uh, 60K, uh, 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 last it gets a ticket then. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, it's simple. Only the net goes to charity Ukraine. Okay. Yep, goes to stadium rebuild. Okay, good, good one there. Good uh, input there. So look at this. Uh, Chiblu says, answer is simple. Only the net goes to charity. Ukraine, the rest goes to the stadium rebuild. So all the, so the owners won't be spending the whole money for the stadium re redevelopment, actually, and coming from the new owners. So, yeah, again, that begs the question, why are they really concerned about how much they'll be spending for the stadium? A rain group will look at uh, Stephen Pagluka's situation with Atalanta FC because he owns half of those shares. Yep, we've talked, talked about that here. So that situation is difficult. If Stephen is handed Chelsea, similar with Martin Investors. Okay, we've talked about that before. Tobago, how do you, again... Okay, Okay, I'm going to come back to you now, Michael. Your thoughts on, on the concerns uh, for the uh, prospective new owners? Um, uh, I think um, the remaining three people are okay and good, but concerning the uh, review of the club, mm. building the club, and maybe relocating from Stanford, from Fulham, and to the to another new site. Mm -hmm. I think relocating is good, but uh, we're gonna spend a lot. And a it's lot, not that simple. Yes, a lot, a lot of money, and I think it's going to bring down the club financially. You understand? Mm -hmm. But uh, the best way to do right now. 
is to rebuild the club and remain at the Fulham. You understand? So mm. that uh, um, if there is any other thing that we're going to do concerning the club, something like buying players and taking care of other things in the club, mm -hmm. we can be able to do that. I don't, I don't like um, uh, the club to move out of Fulham to another place right now. Okay. Yeah, because we're going to have a very big problem if we, uh, if we ever make any attempts to do so. So that's it. Then concerning the bidders, uh, the, the bidders, uh, I don't really know much about them because I don't normally follow, follow it up. Mm -hmm. But uh, all I'm, I'm going to say is that um, the rain group should look into it very well and find the right source for it. Okay. I don't want any regret later because many people are withdrawing. Ricket uh, uh, group have already left. Now, mm -hmm. remaining three people, among the three people, I don't really know those three people very well. But all I know is that I want the right person because I don't want to be disappointed with any of them. You know, they have money, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, many of them have money more than Ibrahimovic. Okay. More than Ibrahimovic. But Ibrahimovic has that passion. And he's not so much interested in profit. And the problem yeah. we are having, the problem with that we are having here right now is the the three contendant, the three bidders, are so much interested in profit, and it's gonna disturb us. To my can, own can thinking. I ask, can I ask you this? Yeah. I'm sure you're a businessman, aren't you? Yeah. So whenever you are investing in anything, don't you look at, first of all, look at the possibility of you getting a return on your investment. Yeah, you will do that. Yeah. But, but it depends the kind of business that you are doing. Uh, I don't see any invest. kind of business. Here's the thing, Michael. Okay. I don't see any kind of business that somebody will be investing their hard, hard, hard earned cash in and never think about the return that they will get, except if you're oh. running a charity organization, which Chelsea okay. isn't. Okay, okay, wait, I'm coming. Mm. I'm coming. Is yeah, what just I'm quickly, saying. Just quickly, because we have other people here on the panel, and I want to do the draw for the Roman Abramovich tribute in a, bit, in a bit. Go ahead. Okay, what I'm saying is not that um, the owner will not get any profit from it, but so much interested in profit. I mean, so much interested in having enough profit. We will bring down the club. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I get it's not point. that. It, yeah, mm -hmm. it's not that they are not going to have a profit. You understand? But mm -hmm. I, I don't want the owner to be so much interested in it because okay. it's going to bring the club down. That's what I mean. It's gonna cause yeah, it will cause a whole lot of problem. I think you you yeah. make a good argument there. Now I get your point. So oh, that is the issue is being overly focused on uh, profit that becomes an issue. So quickly before I go to uh, 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 Matty uh, or Matty, if you I don't know which how the, yeah, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. I uh, I think we'll talk about this. This is a, uh, I think we'll discuss this later in the show. This great comment here by uh, True Blue and also this is what you have to type. Roman Abramovich uh, tribute because we're going to do the draw. We still need uh, two more contestants to have eight contestants to complete the quarterfinal stage of the tribute. If you win, if you make it through to the final and you win, you get $150. And in Tobago, oh, okay, this, this is, uh, is another thing. I'm okay with the club of, of playing elsewhere if the fans, uh, sorry, he says if the fans are. Uh, for a name change, so what? Okay, that's it. And and again, okay, fine. How long, Phantom? That's a good question there. And uh, my big up to Matt, my brother. Nice to see you here. I know you hosted the show earlier. 
and I stopped by, but at the same time, I was preparing for this one. If you haven't, go check out Z Voli YouTube channel, a great channel, new but growing fast. I think you need to be part of it now that is still, you know, uh, because it's going to reach uh, great heights uh, in, uh, in no distant time. Yes, this is what you type. You type Roman Abramovich, uh, tribute to be part of uh, uh, the draw, to be selected to participate. If you make it to the final and you win, you win $150. Uh, again, here we have newcomer here. Has everybody said uh, a hello to uh, Lama Rana Jallo? Uh, Lama Rana Jallo, welcome to Chelsea Perspective. Please feel at home, express yourself. Just be respectful to everybody. And again, if you haven't, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We always like to see new people. And if you enjoy the Blue Morning Show, be sure to show up again next time. Uh, is there anything else to address here? I don't think this is just people adding the comments so they participate in the draw. And Hamsmaster, nice to see you also. Another great Chelsea content creator. Be sure to go check out Hamsmaster's channel. I don't know why. He hasn't joined the panel ever every time I invite him, but I hope that happens someday. So, uh, Maddie, coming to you, your thoughts on whole uh, this discussion regarding uh, the stadium, whether to move or redevelop where we are. Again, we, we, we are on the verge of uh, getting new owners who we know will most likely, most definitely be profit-focused. And they sounded like they're concerned after spending so much money that they would, there's, that, or there's only little they can do where we are to, you know, to get the return on their investment. Yeah, I think there's, um, I, I think, <clears throat> I think everybody that's going into this now is looking to make a profit. Um, you mm. know, you, the, 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 you, you've got to remember these are businessmen, and what you've got to also remember is, is that sport, the, 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 the sport of football now is becoming a business. So no mm. matter how much, no matter how much you invest, no matter how much they're looking to invest, they want to return back. And, you know, you can see it in the likes of how FSG are running. You can see it how different other people are running. My, my only issue was ever to have like a Glazer sort of cronky owner, um, somebody that doesn't really want to see the club to succeed. Um, we want somebody really that's got a bit more of a, a, <clears throat> a bit more of a, uh, I don't know, a sporting aspect really that you know, has a desire to win. Um, mm -hmm. I feel as though Bowley's probably the only one out of, of the bad bunch, really, that can do that. Um, I feel as though that, you know, from regarding what Ben Jacobs was saying before, is just that there wasn't going to be another stage. Um, what they've said is, is that, the, the, that the Bowley bid is strong because they've had development-specific consultants that have provided a clear roadmap and cost uh, mm. The Broughton deal is apparently supposed to have um, more sustainability, um, but it, it's not as specific as the Bowley pitch. So what you would say, what I would gather from that is, is, is that I don't think I could see them looking to move from Stamford Bridge, but I could see them possibly looking to rebuild the structure whilst we, we, we would do like a move around or play at Wembley for a bit, like Spurs did. Um, and we've also had the um, the architects that were doing um, they were looking at the architects that did Spurs' stadium to do ours. So there's a lot of there's a lot of um, details to go through that. Um, but personally, I can see I can see it being a mess for for the for the next few seasons because it's gonna they're, they're going to try and revamp the, the, the stadium. They're also going to revamp the the, the, uh, the you know the, the whole running of the club, the day to day club. Um, so I think it's going to be, you know, you're going to, it, somebody had said it best on the terrace because I've been on the terrace and somebody had mm. said, this, and somebody said the exact same thing. I can see us being put back at least two to maybe three seasons because they're going to have, um, different things that, are um, that we're having to recorporate in. Um, so, and it's also how, you know, cause obviously the Americans are big on money ball. So it's also seeing how they can incorporate the scouting figures and the st statistics into helping to get Chelsea to be better. And also they also want to make a profit as well. So it's, it's all up in the air at the moment. But like I said, we're no further. I was saying it on Gems channel on GNA TV. We're no mm. closer from where we were at the start of March. So we're no closer. The only thing that's closer in the last two to three weeks is that the rickets are out, which is the one that we didn't want. 
So we haven't mm. really gained anything. We've just gained, we've just progressed in time and nothing else has happened. Um, so, you know, that's how I feel about the situation anyway. As long as it's not Pagliuca, because I think it's more of, it sounds more like a movie matchup rather than a, than a, than anything else because it's almost like a credits list at the end of the movie um yeah and there's no real structure whereas the bowley bid has got a bit more structure to it um and broughton's is a bit messy as well i mean it's you know to me i think bowley's the only one with the solid bid really yeah uh, i have a count i have a question i want to ask you also uh, while i'm still with you but before i do that i want to uh, say a big up to my brother uh, uh uh, uh, the big up to couch critic Dennis. Uh, you, he has a YouTube channel, produces great uh, uh, the Chelsea content and from an, an analytical perspective. I think he's one of the best out there. I urge you to go check out his channel and be sure to subscribe if you haven't. And also, you can see the handles of all those in the panel. If you search, I think, Smoky Signals, Bobby, that's not really his Twitter handle. You will find him, follow Nick, or follow CFC Maddy. Uh, great, as you can see, he understands the situation very well and knows the club very well. And also, uh, Michael hasn't also added his Twitter handle to the screen, but uh, I'll find out from him. Uh, again, follow these guys, as you can see. This is a pro bono job. Nobody earns anything from it. And I appreciate um, uh, uh, everybody in the chat. Great input from everybody so far. So I'll go through the chat again, and I'll come back to you uh, with that question. Um, uh, uh, Maddie, if you don't mind. And again, uh, here is uh, uh, just uh, exchanging pleasantry. I'll tell you what, uh, just okay, this is just a discussion between them. I was at the spot, okay, this is also just a dis uh, discussion between those in the chat. Um, let me see if there's anything to address here. If not, we will uh, move ahead. Uh, respect, respect, big up to your my brother. Uh, I respect my brother, like you said. Uh, afternoon, guys. Afternoon, John at CFC. Nice to see you here. And if you're here for the first time, please be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. So, Maddie, coming on back to you, you seem to say that you don't see any of them considering moving. Um, I think it'd be unwise for them to do that. Um, I'd also think it'd be unwise. Why, to why is it unwise? Because I don't know. Were you? Did you see what I read before regarding how they were concerned if they're spending so much money, if they're uh, investing two point something billion pounds, and if the only option is to stay at the beach, that it doesn't make uh, it doesn't make mathematical sense in terms of profit. Um, I can see that, but I think that what what the one thing that they did say, I think in the, the first initial signs, and I think it was to do with, I think it was also part of the Broughton and Bowley deal, and it was also part, I think it was on Absolute Chelsea not so long ago, that they mm. were actually saying that they don't want to change the badge, they don't want to change the colours, they don't want to change where, where the location is. So mm. already, that's that they've already had that already discussed about whether or not they were looking to do it. Roman tried it. Roman tried it at Battersea Power Station years ago, mm -hmm. and that didn't go And that didn't go into fruition. And to be honest can you, with can you, we, I, I can, let's clarify something, Maddie. Why did the Battersea Power Station, do, why didn't it work? Because it was sold. Why, wasn't that the reason? Um, I think there was, I think one, it was to do with planning permission, um, because I actually... So um, it wasn't was really because it, the stadium couldn't move from where it, from its current location to that place, it, right? It was more, I think, it, I believe it was more of planning permission than anything else. Um, but not just that. I think it was also to do with, um, I think it was also something to do with the fans as well, because the fans protest against it. Um, there was actually something not so long ago that I, I actually found this out on change.org. And there was actually protests from about over 10,000 um, supporters. Signatures. That actually, yeah, yeah, that didn't want the club to move. Um, whether or not that reached uh, the board or not is, you know, it, 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 it's, you know, it's, it's debatable. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. But I mean, if you've got, if you've already got Chelsea supporters that are demanding not to move from Stamford Bridge, you'd also have to, you know, you'd also have to appease the uh, the pitch owners um, and the supporters trust, um, and that, and you would also have to get planning permission from the British government. You'd also have to get architects and different other things, check if the ground is secure. Mm. Um, it's a huge financial implication there um, to actually try and get any form of um, 
um, any form of stadium bill whatsoever. Um, somebody that's actually related to somebody that's been in the construction industry for over 40 years. Um, it's a financial and time consuming um, process. Um, and to be honest with you, I can't see really us moving very quickly. They're more likely to rebuild on what they've got or more or less that they'd that, be cheaper and easier to knock down the, the structure and start again. That wouldn't be at all surprising. And it's been done before. Um, but the reason why Arsenal Stadium took so long um, was because of um, looking to it because it took so long. I mean, let's put it this way. The original structure for Arsenal Stadium was originally con idea was by George Graham. So mm. if you consider that's that long ago back that they were looking to, to move from Highbury to, to uh, the Emirates, that's how long it took for it to be done. Um, so it's just a lot easier for, for my personal opinion um, and structurally and everything else from the club's standpoint that it just be easier just to rebuild on the existing structure or look to recondition the structure and then rebuild on top of it. Um, that's probably what I've, that's what, that's what probably, I think that's what Abramovich was looking to do anyway. So, um, I mean, if you look at the plans they had on Stamford Bridge, it was more of an extension rather than a relocation. Cause I think he already admitted defeat about a certain mm. location. So, mm. um, so, I mean, what do you think? But that's my question to you now. Uh, coach, can I come in one second? Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna bring you in. He asked me a question. What I think? Uh, he, he says, "What I think." I'll come to you, Nick. Uh, before I go to Bobby, I know you've been waiting to say something. Yes, yeah, so you make you make some great point, and thank you for educating us on why the bad sea power station move didn't really happen. Uh, again, uh, and you made you made it clear uh, there were protests, and you on change.org there are also some signatures about ten signatures calling for the club not to move. And whether that got to Roman Abramovich, you're not sure. And you, you and I can agree there's a chance it got to him, there's a chance it didn't. Here's what I know as a business person also is that in, in, in such a situation, a profit-focused businessman and whatever, that is whatever entrepreneur you speak to will always put check. The, the most important thing you have to check, how possible is this for me to get my return on my investment? If that isn't possible, if it is, if it would take too long in most cases, some people will abandon, abandon it. Some people will say, okay, I can be patient. Since once it starts coming in, it starts coming in and it, it never stops. Uh, again, uh, I, I would always consider, okay, if I do this, what happens next? Which is in terms of business, uh, from a business perspective, you're looking at, okay, how am I going to get my money back? And that's their concern. They're arguing that mathematically it doesn't make sense to them. And no matter how we see it, these guys will put profit first. And you did say that yourself. That's a new reality for Chelsea Football Club. We had an owner who never cared about profit. But this time, that changes. Even no matter, even if Roman, even if it's the one to select, okay, you select the person to become the new owner or the people to become the new owners, it doesn't change anything with regards of them being, you know, being a, a profit focus, I hope that answers your question. To me, that's how I will see it first. But I get your point that lots of fan, uh, lots of the fan, uh, majority of the fans, some no, you know, large measure of the fan base wouldn't want that to happen. Again, that's only natural because change is difficult. Change is really difficult, but change will happen no matter how we see it. But uh, that's, uh, by the way, and I want to ask everybody that's watching to please uh, smash the like button. We had about uh, 53 people watching and we have just 35 likes. I know we can do better than that. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Again, uh, uh, Nick, your, your thoughts, what, what do you want to say? I just want to say thanks to Matt, you know, for talking facts. You know, you know, he... That's what I've been saying all along. I said it last time and I keep saying it. Chelsea is, is a sacred ground for thousands of us. And it will never move from Stamford Bridge. Not in my lifetime and not in thousands of others' lifetime. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not that. Yeah, wait a minute. And, no, I'm not saying anything yeah. now. Just go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, look, Nick is so passionate, he can, he can go into, get minute. into a fight because of Chelsea. No. Uh, go ahead, Nick. 
Look, I'm just saying, all these sources mm. you've been hearing, you know, I don't know where, the, where they're coming from, but there's nothing's concrete. If they mm. want to make a profit, you know, if they want to make a profit, you know, even if they move the state, they're going to need more money to make uh, build a new stadium than the than to redi redevelop Stamford Bridge. And mm -hmm. I keep saying it, 60,000 is more than enough. We'd be lucky to fill it. So, you know, all this talk about 70,000, 80,000 new stadiums is rubbish, complete rubbish. That's what I want to say. Uh, uh, big up to Matt. Yeah, and Nick, and Nick, don't feel like I'm cutting you off. This is just a passionate discussion. We all love Chelsea. I know you love Chelsea. And like I said, I, I, I could see you getting into a fight because of Chelsea Football Club. But that's, by the way. Uh, and again, if you look at the screen, I'm going to let Bobby talk. Once Bobby is done, then we'll do the draw to select uh, the uh, one. I think we'll try and do select two participants today because from tomorrow, I'll be traveling to Africa for my father's burial and uncle for my father and my uncle's burial. So uh, when I come back, the competition will kick off. What you have to type is Roman Abramovich uh, tribute, hashtag Roman Abramovich uh, tribute. So I'll do the draw. We will do it twice to get uh, uh, complete the uh, that is to have the number of uh, contestants we have to start up from the uh, 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 quarterfinals uh, stage. And here we have. Uh, it's, let's say, let me see if there's anything else here to address. Uh, afternoon, guys. I think I've seen that before. I've seen this before, and I highlighted this because it's something I want us to talk about there. Uh, thank you for that. Shared, liked, and subbed. Thank you very much. John CFC, I appreciate that. And also, welcome to the channel. And feel free to express yourself. Just be respectful to one another. And I'm seeing Limitless again today. How are you doing, brother? I hope you're doing well. Always nice to see you. So, Bobby, over to you from everything you've heard from Maddie. Great, some great input, but your thoughts. Uh, you see, unfortunately, the truth is not always what we want to hear. And quite often, it's what's best for us. There's a bit of misinformation here. As somebody, as I said, even last night, I did a bit of security at Chelsea, and especially around that time of the Battersea uh, power plant project. Mm -hmm. The Chelsea pitch owners had agreed that and by the way, let's could, establish, no, let let's establish. I, I no, really no, I'm, we're not fighting. Across. You because want Chelsea to stay listening. there, right? You what? want Chelsea to remain at Stamford Bridge if possible, right? That's your preferred choice. I want choice. Chelsea to remain at Stamford Bridge 100%. Exactly. I just wanted to establish that. I wasn't cutting you off. Go ahead. However, the first thing I want to say is that the Chelsea pitch owners had agreed for the club to move, to Roman to move the club, as long as they kept the move within a, a radius of about, I think, five to ten miles from Stamford Bridge, the Fulham Road. Mm. And the Battersea Power uh, Plant project was very much, very much accepted by the vast majority. There's always going to be those that will object by the vast majority of Chelsea fans and certainly by the pitch owners. Mm -hmm. What made that deal fall through was that it was sold to somebody else and not to Chelsea. The Earl's Court project was the exact same thing, only it was also found that the, uh, I think there were some issues as to the acreage uh, uh, to the development as well, because we were wondering if there was ever going to be enough space to develop in the way Chelsea wanted to develop. Both those projects were, were within the, the radius of miles from the um, power plant, from the, uh, uh, from the Fulham Road that was acceptable to the pitch owners. Now, when they both fell through, Roman's first plan was Stamford Bridge. He looked at it, it was expensive, it was tricky. Then he saw these other two locations that were cheaper, less tricky, and, 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 and with space to expand or do whatever he wanted. And so mm. he went for that. When that didn't work, he came back to Stamford Bridge, got all the necessary permissions, and got the design of the Bird's Nest Stadium that we all know what happened from there on. He was good to go, but he couldn't get back in the country. Now, these new owners, 
just where I do agree with Matt is I, that was all discussed, this issue about the stadium. So I don't know why it's coming up now. That's why I kind of have some doubts. But these new owners will pledge themselves to the development of a new stadium, more especially if part of the proceeds of the sale is actually going into the new stadium. However, as I keep saying, if it is not financially viable, I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying if it isn't in that the margin for profits is, accept, is, is affected by inflations and further complexity to the development, in the long term, they will need to look elsewhere. This is just the reality. It may not be what we want to hear, but this is just the reality. And this is what needs to be, one thing that has to be done for the good of the club is to expand upon its net profits, uh, uh, annual profits, in order for the club to move forward. Staying as we are is not an option. I repeat that. Staying as we are is not an option. Now, let's hope that we can redevelop Stamford Bridge, which is what everybody wants. Everybody wants that. And, it, you know, as far as the design and the plans are concerned, it seems possible. I've heard that Bowley has already been reaching out to uh, ask for the uh, uh, bird's nest plans uh, in order to see what they can do with it. I mean, that's fine. But the elephant in the room is finances, just like everything else. And if the project becomes too expensive, it will be scrapped. Let's just accept that. You see, the thing about accepting change is that it's sometimes difficult. There are many things through the course of my life we've had to change. Is, change is always difficult. It is difficult that I've had to embrace. I didn't always believe in at first. But, you know, you kind of get used to it and you just get on with life because life, life is about change. You know, it's, it, it, it just shifts whether we like it or not. And this is one of them. It is, there is every potential for it to shift. And just to say that, you know, Nick, I love Nick. I love his passion for Chelsea. But it's not enough to just say, oh, 60,000 is more than enough. By whose accounting judgment? They may not feel so. They may want more because they can get more. I can assure you they can get more. But as we say again, the preferred option is and always will be Stamford Bridge. This is just a plan B in case. Mm -hmm. And we have to prepare ourselves for the in case. If we're not prepared for an alternative, we're not being realistic. It's just as simple as that. It's not... It's not um, said to hurt anybody. It's not said to try and scupper the club or, or, to, or to, you know, shatter illusions or anything to the contrary. We're looking for a better future. And if we're not looking for a better future, then there's something absolutely wrong. There's, a fun, there's something fundamentally wrong. We must be man enough and strong enough to take a change when it needs to happen. Yeah, so uh, with that, uh, uh, thank you for that great input. I think it, this has been a very wonderful uh, conversation. And uh, this, whenever we talk about Ch anything serious about uh, like this to Charles, I'd like to have Bobby on the panel, Marty, uh, uh, Michael, Nick, of course, who I've, I, I'd argue we'll, we'll, we'll throw a punch at somebody <laughs> when talking about Chelsea. But I'm like that too. The most important thing is that we all love Chelsea Football Football Club, and we're passionate about it. And we could go into a fight because of it. That's a, a true, uh, you know, loyalty. If you ask me. Uh, so now I, I want to do the draw. If you want to be part of the draw, just type a uh, uh, pound sign Roman Abramovich tribute. And if you're on the panel, you can also go to the chat and drop in the hashtag Roman Abramovich a tribute. It's, it's a, a, a contest uh, where you write a tribute for, to uh, Roman Abramovich. It's a quarterfinal stage, a summer final, and then the final. If you win it, you get $150. We have, I think, uh, six uh, contestants so far. We're looking for 
uh, we're looking for 10. Uh, no, we're looking for eight, so to speak. Uh, again, uh, I'm going to draw now. If uh, uh, if anybody in, on the panel wants to go and join, you just let me know. Anybody on the panel wants to go join, just let me know. I'm already in. My okay, problem. I know you're in, uh, so I'm asking. Maddie, you want to join? Okay, Maddie already, I can see his uh, text. Uh, uh ik okay i will add you to the panel uh but please be sure your mic is on the mute let me just uh do the draw right now uh if we can see the screen i'll go ahead and do the draw and i think bobby maybe bobby wants to join let's see what happens um so why we wait uh, i just wanted to see if the reason bobby left is that he wants to you know join the, the, the draw uh I, I, ike how are you doing yeah, I'm all right. Good morning. Brilliant, brilliant. Nice, nice to see you. I, 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 if you have you been following the discussion, if if yes, I wanted to ask you a question regarding the possibility that the new owners might decide to move away from Stanford Bridge. Is that something you want to see happen, or do you think uh, also do you think is something that they may choose to do, given that they're profit focused, but they could still develop Stanford Bridge. And still make some money if the, you know again it's there's nothing uh, engineers cannot do these days. Yeah, I actually came in because of the last uh, the last caller also the last person I was speaking. Right. I actually did not know exactly what he was talking about. Because okay, uh, go ahead. You see, everybody, we are all business people. Like the right question you asked him a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. and when you get into business. Uh, just one second. Okay, Bobby, thank you very much for finding time to stop by. I, I always like to have you on the panel. Uh, go ahead, brother. So the first thing you think as a businessman is how do I maximize profit? Mm -hmm. So if you if you know or if you see you're not going to make any profit, most time you don't go into such business. The only person that goes into such business is Roman Abrahimov because yep. he don't care. Yep. Mm -hmm. He's the only man that I have seen that goes into business that don't care about the profit because, because of the passion. Now, as for redeveloping Stanford Bridge, of course, I don't want us to move. I don't want Chelsea to leave Stanford Bridge. But if at the end of the day, Roma is gone, we know. If the other people that are coming in or the president is going to own the club, mm. he's never going to be like Roman. He's going to look for how he can make profit. Now, if at the end of the day, redeveloping Stafford Bridge is not possible, then moving is not bad. The only thing that is constant in life is change. We Chelsea fans, we have been spoiled over the years, but we should accept this change. You understand? We should learn to mm -hmm. accept this change. I love the club, yes. But at this point in time, it is not what it used to be. Look at Stafford Bridge yesterday. There were, there were empty spaces because what the government is doing. Like the first caller said, I don't know how the, the, the problem in Ukraine is affecting Chelsea. It's just a fight between the government and Chelsea at this point in time because that is the way I see it. Nick, Nick, Nick will really like you. Go ahead. Look at, look at Rudika's, Rudika's case. I believe if the government had not put sanction on Chelsea, possibly Rudika would have been the winner by now. Because, like the caller said, there's nobody as better than Rudiger at this point. You understand? Now, at the end of the day, who is suffering? It's like two elephants fighting. The grass is going, definitely going to suffer. Yeah. Chelsea, yeah. Chelsea fans are the ones suffering at this moment. The club is the one suffering at this moment. Why? Because the government have taken the decision that they were not supposed to take in the first place. Tell me how... How is it related? Chelsea, Ukraine, Russia. How are these things related? You understand? I live in the US. Roman Abramovich has assets here in this country. America did not sanction him. Because he's not involved, he's not directly involved in whatever that is going on in Ukraine. Personally, I hate to say so many things, but at this point, these people are really, they are not really doing the right thing. So selling the club to these, you know, profit-haunting people is definitely going to take a toll 
on this club. But like I said, we have to accept this change. We have to, you know, go by it, and we have to, you know, put up with it. No. Definitely, they are coming here to make profits, and it's never yeah. going to be the same the way it mm -hmm. used to. Be painful. Yeah. Klaus, yeah. yeah. ask uh, this guy something. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Nick, uh, so that I can do the draw before we continue. Go yeah, ahead, what, Nick. What's, sorry, what's your, what's your name? I don't get his name. Ike. Ike. No, you, yeah. you, you have to you have to understand something else. Like like me, I've been going to Sanford Bridge since the age of ten, and you know it's sacred. There's a lot for for uh, emotional uh, attachment to it. We have two great legends buried in that ground. Do you understand? No, three. Now we have Peter Oscar and Peter Bonetti. If you know these players, I, I don't. You probably don't. Hmm. But these great legends, yeah, one of them, we have a statue outside the West. Let me finish. Outside the West End, Peter Osgood, the king, and only true king of Stamford Bridge. His ashes are buried in that ground. And Peter Bernetti, a few weeks ago, we done the same. We buried his ashes in, in the ground. So no way is Chelsea Football Club. I don't care what you say about it doesn't make financial sense. No way is Chelsea Football Club moving from Stamford Bridge. So you just, you know, then you got to see what happens. Again, uh, like the, the Bobby said, like um, uh, Ike said, I think like everybody else that's spoken about this issue said, staying at the bridge is a preferred option. But the whole, we, we, that's, that's, here's the reality here, Nick. Uh, the reality is that moving or not moving, it's not actually in the hands of the fans. It's not in the hands of the fans. I know the Chelsea no, people owners are in place. No, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. Wait, Can I finish? Wait, wait, wait. All right. Me, all right, finish. I'll, 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 I'll talk. No, no, just go ahead. Go ahead. Say what you want to say, Nick. Look, you, I know what you're saying. I understand, you know, financial this and that. But look, you, uh, not, uh, most Chelsea fans, thousands of us, we will be against movies from Sanford Bridge, and it's not. Nick, can I ask you quickly? You're, you're making what? me hungry. You're eating. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, sorry. <clears throat> no, no, no. It doesn't matter. I was just kidding. Just go ahead, brother. Yeah, I was just eating a sandwich. Anyway, look. Right, go ahead. Thousands of us, we would never want to move from Sanford Bridge, and the the heritage and everything. You know, you can't. How are you going to live? these great legends ashes and build flat on top of them or something what you know what they're going to do with stanford bridge in the end it won't happen because we won't let it happen and i don't care what you the fans have a big say can i and ask you this one, nick just being objective here what say. what are you going to do what are the fans going to do to stop it we are going to remember move, the, the new owner can go where you want but it won't be chosen football club Chelsea so you are agreeing now there's still a possibility that they decide, you know what, we're moving. Yeah, if they move, they're going to have to uh, go with a different name. That won't be good for them either. Chelsea Football Club will always be at the bridge. That's the let, whole let me ask you this, Nick. Yeah. Let me ask you this. We've established from what I read, right? What I that's read. All, we just yeah, had a like conversation. That, I'm, yeah, I'm coming. Yeah. I'm coming, Nick. We're not fighting. You, you're my brother here. And you know yeah. I love you. We're not fighting, we're just having a conversation and we'll try to be as objective as possible. If truly what we read, uh, uh, I can, are you familiar with what I read here before? Yeah, uh, you've read so many things, that's exactly what you're yeah, talking what about. Yeah, read, what I read is something about the prospective new owners being concerned that mathematically uh, it, it is difficult <laughs> to spend that much money, redevelop where we are, and then still make profit. Yeah, every businessman knows that. Exactly. So, Nick, my question to you is that, yeah, here's the thing. This owners, what if it, it comes down to this owner saying, you know what, if you're going to force us to stay at the bridge, we don't want it. You know what happens to the club? Bankruptcy. Yes. Would you rather that happen than the club move elsewhere if it comes to that? It's, that's not the case right now. But I'm just asking a question. Since we're hearing that they're concerned that spending two point something billion pounds 
and then remaining at the bridge that mathematically it doesn't make business sense. If they yeah, start to look, say, if this, if, no, I'm coming, let me, I'm asking you a question. If this doesn't change, we don't want to buy the club and we don't have any potential new owners, then two things are possible. Moving yeah. or the club gets bankrupt. Which would or, they choose? Or someone else comes in. You don't know. No, it's just, to, to, to when? When will someone else come in? There's no time. You know, there was time when Ken Bates was going bankrupt with the club. So out of the blue, out of nowhere, Roman came in and saved the club. So, he, he, you know, that, nothing's impossible. Chelsea's too big for for that to happen. And it happened before, and we didn't, you know, someone saved us. So, you know, I, whatever happens, I don't care. I'm not, you know, I wouldn't move from Stafford Bridge if you give me a billion uh, dollars or pounds, whatever. Chelsea's sacred. We have players, and I just said it how many times, buried the, in that These ground. people you're talking about that are buried at Stamford Bridge. Yes. They were buried They're there legends. already before the pitch owners agreed for a move to the Batista Station. Where, where, where no, Batista Peter Station? Benetti was buried a few, two, three weeks ago. And I was there. But at least two of them already were buried there. Yeah, Peter Oscar was buried there. That's yeah. the thing. Again, I get your point. Again, I, I, I don't know, but I, I, let, uh, let me ask you that question that I just asked uh, Nick uh, before we do the draw, Maddie. Yeah. Which would you choose to allow the club to go bankrupt or move? Maddie, are you still there? Okay, I think we've lost Maddie, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the draw. Uh, I think everybody in there that wants to participate uh, has, you know, joined. Let me, uh, okay, sent you uh, three tweets. Okay, I will look at those uh, tweets in a bit. Let me just do the draw right now. Um, let's do it. Let's see. Just uh, three people. Three entries. Maybe other people. I think I see more than three people. Maybe others that entered. Uh, uh, Roman Abramovich tribute. It looks like some people have left the chat, and probably if you're not in the chat, it's not going to pick you up. I don't know, Michael. Maybe you want to go out and join the chat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And okay. Ike, Ike, do you want to participate in the tribute? Yeah. Okay, but I really don't know what that is because my first time joining this. Show. Okay. Oh, oh, nice. So welcome, brother. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And you, yeah. Again, here's the thing. It's 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 a Roman Abramovich tribute contest where there's going to be three stages: quarterfinal stage, semifinal stage, and the final stage. You write a tribute to Roman Abramovich. You present the uh, the tribute. If you want to be, if you want to, if you want to be seen in the presentation, that's up to you. If you want to just just if you want it to be just your voice. That's up to you. We want a copy of the presentation and a copy of the written uh, a tribute. And also, you don't repeat a tribute for one, uh, for the quarterfinal stage, the summer final stage, and the final stage. We understand there are certain elements that has to repeat for, for people to recognize that the tribute is about Roman Abramovich. But you don't repeat uh, the first tribute as the second one and as the third one. So you get a chance to win $150 if you get to the final and you win it. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, so you have to all you have to do type in the chat Roman Abram hashtag Roman Abramage uh, tribute. I'll wait for you to do that. Uh, so while I wait for him to join the chat and type in that, uh, Matt, are you there, Maddie? I don't. It looks like we've lost Maddie, but I'm going to wait for Ike to add his. Uh, Type in the Roman Abramovich tribute, and I'm going to try and go through the chat again. Uh, again, uh, True Blue in live is, uh, I'm not sure yet, it can be done, but he will be tight. Chelsea Village might have to go again. Uh, yep. Nick Blue wants us to buy in other big players to fight for the Champions League against City, Madrid, and Bayern, but it is also the, with being uh, the worst of the, uh, um, the top six revenue. You can't not have it, uh, Nick. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to you, Nick. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yes, yeah, so look, mm. that doesn't make sense. You know, we can rebuild the bridge and carry on challenging. We done mm -hmm. it before. We done it before. We we were you know when we had um, Zola and those 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 places. That time we had, we were rebuilding the West End. 
don't forget, and the knock you hardly in the shed, and we were playing in three, you know, three sections mm. f- for two years mm. until the new, the new stadium uh, developed. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't know, you know, all the fuss about. I don't know. I don't me. I don't understand anyone who wants to move out, out the bridge and go to a stupid stadium somewhere out of Fulham. Just mm. that's, that that doesn't make sense, and it won't happen. I keep telling you. Mm-hmm. Go that's uh, I told you, make a poll and see who wants to move. Yeah, uh, and I you need to put nothing in the men chat on YouTube, not in the private chat here. Was that? Ike, I'm talking to yeah. Ike. Uh, he added right. his. Uh, uh, yeah, you have you have to put it in the main. Uh, that is from YouTube, not on the private chat. Ike, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, you have to go to YouTube and, and and put and put it. Let me provide the link for you, a link to you in case you don't have it. I'll put it in the private chat so that way you can, you know. Yep, here's the link. You have to go to YouTube and add that. So, Nick, uh, I don't know. Did we lose Maddie? Are you still there? Yeah, I don't know where Maddie's got to. Uh, maybe lost connection. Okay, so probably he's still listening. So, Nick, you're yeah. already part of the contest, so no need to join yeah. Oh, yeah, I know, uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So Nick, anything else you want to add? Why we? Why we wait for? I, okay, Ike, have you added? Have you added it? Who me? No, I'm I, I asking Ike if he's added uh, oh, hashtag yeah, Roman yeah. Abramovich uh, tribute to the chat proper. Ike, have you done that? Uh, I don't know if he's done that. I just added him back. Ike, I was asking if you've typed Roman Abramovich tribute. Have you? No, I'm not. I, I'm at work. I'm just trying to do this. You know how it is here in the U.S. I'm okay, yeah, work. yeah, I'm yeah. Okay, let me represent you. Let me represent you. All right, Should I do you. that for you? Yes, yes. Okay, I'll do that for you. I'll type Roman Abramovich, uh, but I'm representing uh, uh, Marty, Marty here because he's on the panel and he's at work. Uh, Roman Abramovich. So if I win, uh, Maddie is the person that won, not me. So I'm going to give it a bit so it reflects on our uh, It's not Maddie. Uh, it's, 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 it's not Maddie Sorry? that won. It's Ike that wins if you win. Yep, yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. Uh, yeah, so let me stop mixing it up. Let me see if there's anything else to read here. Great discussion. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Again, if you haven't, like I've said before, go check out Couch a Critic a YouTube channel. You will love it. From a tactical perspective, he's one of the best out there. Um, back cafe, okay, they're having a conversation between them and Jacob. There's a link pinned at the top. Yes, if you want to join, there's a link pinned at the top. Thank you very much for that, uh, True Blue. You're always a good supporter here and with great input. So let me see how many people we have here. Just still three. Um, I'm going to refresh it, maybe run it again. Maybe it needs to you know, pick up everybody again, but... Let's see. Okay, I hope I typed it correctly. Refresh it. Come back to it. Then add this here. Roman Abramovich tribute. I think I typed everything correctly. And this is the one here. So I'm going to start collecting. Still three, so I'm just going to draw. Let's see who wins. So uh, it is Maddie. Maddie is one of the contestants also. Um, I'm, I'm going to try and do the draw tomorrow, but probably the stream tomorrow because I'm traveling tomorrow. We'll start earlier than usual so that we'll do the draw before I travel. So congratulations to Maddie. Maddie is one of the contestants. I hope you win it. Uh, same luck to everybody else. Yeah, so something else we want I want us to talk about. Um, let me see. Uh, this is just them having a conversation is the fact that they're saying, uh, let me read this. Uh, if you're hearing me, Nick, can you hear me? And I hope everybody on the panel can hear me. Uh, number five says, uh, it says, the report claims that uh, that observers close to the situation say they expect Boston uh, uh, Celtics owner Stephen Pagliuca beat to be eliminated this week as it is not offering anything new the proposal from Sam Martin Broughton and Todd Bali. Okay, the point here is that uh, that Stevens group, uh, Stephen Paglika's group, might be eliminated because they're not offering. 
anything new. So, I, do you have anything to say about that? Yeah. I really, I really don't have much to say. Mike, but... I think you have your mic on. There's a lot of background noise. Yeah, we're getting a lot of feedback. It's, I think it's Mike. But, but go ahead. I think it's fine now. Go ahead, uh, uh, Ike. Ike, can you can you hear? Okay, yeah, uh, uh, Nick. Yeah, we can hear you. So go ahead. You were saying something about the fact that uh, the Pagliuca, uh Stephen Pagliuca group might be eliminated eliminated because they haven't offered anything new. Yeah, um, I think I, I discovered that he has sixty six percent of Atalanta, or something like that. That that's an issue on its own. That is an issue. So since then, if he if he give if he give up that, no problem. But if he's not ready to give up that stick in Atalanta, <coughs> he's not even qualified. <coughs> mm. Then secondly, the day I discovered that Serena Williams and the other guy, or what is going the um. Uh, um, Hamilton, yeah, join the other uh, other consortium. I rule them mm. out because chess is not a playground for kids. Again, that that's a reason for that. that. That's a big reason for that. Uh, adding those two to that group, I think it makes them even more. Uh, I think a viable, the, the, one of the most viable options for the club. Given uh, it's about the brand, they will ho help grow the club's brand in terms of sales of uh, uh, tickets for executive boxes and also their reach. This guy's uh, the popular worldwide. I think he helps grow. That's not an issue at all. Uh, I, that won't be a problem. And after all, they're not, exp uh, you know, you know, investing uh, too much, uh, not that much, actually. Uh, so, David, welcome to the panel. How are you? David, are you there? Yes, good day. Uh, good day to you too. Yeah, How are I'm you there. doing? Good day. Good day. Brilliant. Nice to have you on the panel. I'm so, fine, what I'm do you fine. think? Uh, David is my. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, this is my so first what time. Do you think? Uh, I really want to know uh, what is going Go ahead. You have Come a again? question? Go ahead, David. Yeah, I, I want to know. I want to know about the question. So, I, I, I will participate. I want to know. Okay, the question I have for you, what do you think, uh, let me just ask you this, what do you think about the news that Stephen Pagluca, that is the guy that owns up to 55% of the shares in Atalanta, the Italian club, that he may be eliminated from the process, his group might be eliminated from the process because they haven't offered anything new. Your thoughts on that? Did you hear my question, David? Okay, yeah, Nick, I'm uh, hearing you, but I can't get uh, to okay, it because net, net. Okay, you All might right. have to go out and come back in again. So, Nick, your thoughts on that um, question? What yeah. do you think? The fact that they uh, we're hearing, you know, that they might be eliminated from the process because they haven't offered anything new. Plus, you must remember. I think of all the three groups remaining, they have a serious problem regarding. Uh, the talks that he was, uh, the rumors that he was involved in, um, in a bribery scandal in South Africa. Your thoughts? Nick, yeah, did, um, did you hear? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Like I said before, I don't think uh, Paluka will, you know, will win this. For me, it's just, you know, for me, I told you, uh, for me, it's top only. Browson has a mm -hmm. chance, but. The favorite is Todd Bowley. Mm. He sounds uh, he sounds more concrete than uh, than anyone. Yeah, mm. Pagluca has problems. I can see him going going the way of the Ricketts. He's, he, you know the same thing is, is going to happen with him. I think, but he uh, I don't think they have a chance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my my dear, you still with us? I don't know what happened. He hasn't spoken uh, since. Sorry, dudes. I've been uh, I've been temporarily engaged. Um, oh, okay, okay. I, the question is your thoughts on on the fact that uh, I understand you're probably at work and then be careful, please. We don't want you to lose your job. The question I have for you is this: uh, What do you think about the news that the, the Stephen Pagliuca group might be eliminated from the process that they because they haven't offered anything new? Um, 
I, I, th- I don't know if it's the case of offering anything new. I think what they're probably looking at is also um, the amount of people that are involved and what their roles are. Um, I don't know whether or not they are. Um, it's, it seems a bit of a mess, actually, um, from from the logistical side, from a financial point of view, and also from commitments wise, you look at Stephen Pagliuca, he's managing Atlanta and he's also looking to join forces and ownership with uh, with Chelsea. Um, for mm. me, that's a conflict of interest. So immediately you're going to be wondering, where's the money coming from? He's not going to pay for just Atlanta and he's also not going to let Atlanta suffer and he's not going to let Chelsea suffer. So where's so where's the happy medium there? You've got to have a you've got to have a plan of action. You've also got to have a financial plan of action. And for me, that's that, that's the sticking point. Now, how he's got this far in the process, obviously the Rain Group must have obviously thought of him enough to in order for him to keep on the on the panel, and that's fair enough. Um, and mm-hmm. the shortlist, and that's fair enough. But we're talking about we're talking about Rain Group really, who have held up the process for over two, three months. You've got over, you, you know, you've got, we're going through, it's almost like an X Factor audition, this bloody, um, this, this auction process. It's, <clears> it's <throat> becoming obscene. Um, and not just that, you've got to remember that the amount of um, problems that we have received um, from Rain Group is, is that they're not exactly the most um, organised you know, we we were letting go of huge amount of offers. You know, we had the you know we also had different Saudi offers apparently as well. This is a this is a rain this is this rain group is not organised. Um, and as far as Stephen Pagliuca of not offering anything new, if that's from an insider's view, isn't that a, mm. isn't that a good thing that we know about it now before knowing about it later on when they've taken over? You know, mm. um, and I think sometimes it's best to it's d- there's an old saying discretion is the best form of valor. And I think that we've got to be careful who we who we have as next owners, because it, it, it will trigger a trap door of what they're also going to offer, what they're going to offer us. Mm. Um, and personally, um, if they're doing things with Atlanta and then now going back to then say, oh, yes, but we can offer things to Chelsea that are the exact same. You then have to question their financial implications and what they want for both parties. They wanted a joint. Um, cons- they wanted at one stage to form almost like a, a super consortium or something like that to take over two clubs. Well, that's mm-hmm. a conflict of interest straight away. And there's also a, 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 an unusual one, really, of um, who's getting who's getting more attention because that's how that's how things start um, capitulating. So. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's how I feel about the situation with Stephen Pagliuca. It just seems messy. It, there's nothing that fills me or brims me with confidence financially and s- even stability wise. So I think really I, I'd I rather think, go. Uh, it, it, it most likely we have issues, I think, with passing the vetting process, given that he has, uh, bribery scandal, uh, in South Africa. I don't know if they've gone beyond the vetting process, but the truth is, I think you said something. I think it, it's they're messy, really. Uh, given the, you know the, the rain group are messy, given the the fact that it, it seems like they see the they seem to restructure the process as they go. They, they didn't have or you know a, a plan in place already for it. I don't know if you still have time. I want to ask you about this because you sent me a Twitter uh, DM also about it that rain group. Has asked and the three shortlisted uh, Chelsea beaters in the last few days to provide commitment that they will remain in control of the Blues until at least 2032. How big of a deal is that? Um, well, you could look at this from two different perspectives. Um, first of all, you can look at it as it's a at least a 10-year commitment. So what they want, what Roman wants is he wants solid commitment. So financially, stability and everything else that goes into it, he wants a solid Mm -hmm. there for 10 years. So that's that's that's, you know, so that's a good thing. The second thing I look at is, is that it says until at least 
at least that's that that's that, that's the main word there at least 2032 mm-hmm. so to me that sounds like to me that there could be an opportunity dare i say it that i reckon that, that there could be something on the lines of seeing whether or not this is what you this is what i can see happening for 10 years mm-hmm. and i want you to be committed to chelsea for 10 years and hopefully, dare I say it, and it will get Nick doing backflips across his front lawn, but I could see Roman, after 10 years of all this blowing over, I can see him returning. Because at 2032, nobody puts in a guarantee saying, I want you to be, um, I want you to keep this ownership going until at least 2032. So immediately that says to me, that there are implications there or there is a an agreement there that says mm. that you must keep ownership of this club and you must keep them challenging for titles and you must do the Roman isn't stupid. Um, I can see that obviously the only thing that he's done stupidly so far is given mm. to the rain group to organize. That's the only stupid thing he's done. He's given it to the he rain prob- group. He to probably organize. didn't know. They probably didn't know they no, were handling no. it the way they did. Well I I think uh, this has opened so many doors. This has opened so many eyes to the possibilities of this is how Rain Group organises billion people, a billion pounds worth of you know, assets. And not just that, mm. it also opens up the door to how they organise normal accounts. Now, if it was back in the day, you know, I don't know who organised the sale of Chelsea beforehand, but it was done under wraps. So, that just goes to show you that the, the sheer magnitude of how little um, or how little degree of knowledge and, and um, stability that, that the Rain Group have in dealing with a sale. Um, but I will say one thing for anybody that, that's worried about, the, you know, or wondering who the, the owner is going to be, is, mm. is that when Roman Abramovich took charge of Chelsea, when, he was, when it was under Ken Bates, he was announced and unveiled two weeks after he took ownership. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if you are looking at either a Bowley or a Broughton because Sebastian Coe was in the stands not um, for Saturday's game. So there is going to be um, some. It was either there's going to be a winner and a loser. I haven't seen Stephen Pagliocca in the ground yet. And nobody's bit seen somebody like that that's linked with Stephen Pagliocca in the ground yet. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if you see Stephen Pagliocca silently be discounted from the bid. Um, but that's my opinion and my opinion alone. Um, but I think that you will see a change maybe in the next 72 or maybe hours in, or in the next five days. But you'll see a difference. Wow, brilliant. I, I appreciate your input. And again, I hope, I know you're at work probably, but I, again, I love I loved it that you found time to join us and I hope you keep coming back to, uh, Blue, to the Blue Morning <coughs> Show. Your, your inputs are brilliant. Nick, I'm going to come to you. I know you, you probably like this. You probably, I know you would love yeah. this. <laughs> how, how important is this? And here's the second part of it. I know, Maddie, I know you've seen it already because you sent me a DM regarding that. It says... Uh, the ownership guarantee will be incorporated in the sale contract, making it legally enforceable, legally binding, if you want. How, Nick, how happy are you about that part of the whole thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought that would happen anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good thing, isn't it? It so, is. Yeah. Of course, because like I said it before, Today, if you if you remember, I said there's always a chance for Roman to come back. Did I, did I, say, did I think I, I'll still argue against that, and I have I have my reasons. Uh, um, again, um, France, go ahead, can, but go ahead when you're done. I'll tell you why. You know, there's always a chance. I said it before. You know, he can come back after a few years when everything's finished. The government stop uh, harassing us. Mm. And he, he, you don't know because he is a true fan. Don't forget, he loves Chelsea. That's mm-hmm. why he was sure they 
they're going to redevelop the the ground like you know you know as fans want. So you know that's why I think Bowley is going to win this, and Bowley has more chance to do what we want than anyone else. You know, forget okay. all these. Well, Bobby talks a lot of our politics, but he's wrong. There's no way it's good for Chelsea to move out of the bridge. Bobby says, oh, I'd like to stay here, but no, it's good if we have to, we move. No, it's not as simple as that. We don't move, and we will never move. Bobby's got it all wrong, as always. Uh, okay, uh, uh, this is on the screen saying, I think it's just with regards to that. Bidders for Chelsea Football Club must guarantee that they will not sell a controlling stake for at least a decade as Roman Abramovich's tenure as owner nears its conclusion. I think I think this further just uh, uh, just more about uh, the reason for that uh, aspect of the whole thing. And thank you for uh, uh, thank you for uh, what's his name uh, and Mad Maddie again. Congratulations! You know you've been selected as one of the contestants, right? Yeah, Matt, really? Matt. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was you. This is you, right, CFC Maddie? Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Oh, uh, congratulations again! Coach, so you get the chance to win one fifty dollars if you win. Coach, I think. Uh, let me ask you uh, something uh, about uh, this, yeah. uh, competition. Yeah, yeah you, what, you didn't make it clear. So, what? What can we write things down and read them while we talk? Or here's the thing: talk? you write. Uh, you, there are uh, three stages. Uh, stage one, quarterfinals. Yeah. Stage two, semifinals, and then stage three. Finals, right. uh, uh, that is, so you will play against somebody. First. If you beat the person, you progress to the next stage. Okay. And the rule is you don't repeat the, the that is, yeah. the, the tribute you use in the corner, quarterfinal stage, you don't use it uh, for the semifinal stage. You have to make some changes. We understand there are some elements okay. that has to repeat for it to still be about Roman Abramovich and Chelsea Football Club. But so, uh, so, again, there can, you, only, there can only be one winner then. That, that's me. Yeah, Sorry, there can only be one winner. Yeah, that's it. In the final. <laughs> uh, but I may decide, no, okay, maybe. No, you I didn't think you know what? what? I said. You know what? The fi- let me make it like winner. this. The winner yeah. in the final yeah. gets $150. And then yeah. uh, the, the second, uh, that is the, 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 the loser and the participant in the final gets $50. All right, that's, that's fair. That's yeah, so true. that's fair now, exactly. So now, but that's, by the way, uh, uh, now. I wanted to say again, again, uh, Maddie, Maddie, congratulations again to, again to you. One of the organizers will reach out to you and explain us stuff, more stuff to you. So let's go into talking about uh, win against uh, West Ham United. Uh, how important was that win, Maddie? Um, I think the win was important. Um, personally, I think we shouldn't have had to wait um, for what. A, a penalty by Jorginho. Um, I think we could have. Um, I think per- personally, I think Jorginho should have scored the goal, um, or at least the penalty. Um, I feel as though that it was very lacklustre as far as performance-wise. First half was abysmal. Even Tuchel looked bored. Um, I feel as though that there was no real urgency to at least have chances at goal. I mean, Nick will probably disagree with me, but. Um, mm. At the end of the day, I feel as though that can we, you know, as much as as much as Pulisic got the goal, and that's that's great, I suppose. Um, <laughs> everybody knows my agenda with Pulisic, um, with Pulisic. Um, but really, I think we shouldn't have had to have waited for at least ninety minutes to sew it up. Uh, we had so many, ch- we had chances on goal. Um, it was really poor. I don't know why Lukaku was playing. To be honest, I didn't see why we could have just kept. We could have. We could have just switched up the system, or possibly even kept Werner on. I think Werner nearly scored. Werner was close to scoring. I think, to be honest with you, it was a very lacklustre performance, and it wasn't just from one individual player. It was a unit. And but I mean, to be honest with you, um, you know, I think it, the win is needed. Um, but we've got to go against Manchester United now. Um, and then we've got Everton shortly after. Now, admittedly, those are going to be very diff- those t- to me are going to be very difficult because Everton will want to will want to keep out of the um, Everton will want to keep out of the relegation zone. Um, and Frank and will want that. to beat Chelsea. Yep, and Frank will want to beat Chelsea. And not just that, Manchester United. Manchester United need the win because otherwise, you know, they're going to have the fans not on their side. They're already calling for. Um, the club to be sold and everything else. 
And to be honest with you, you know, we need to show that we've we deserve to be in the top four. Um, so that that that's only putting uh, pressure on us really to succeed. Um, you know, so I I don't think, especially with the lackluster performance. I mean, we've been dipping in form since we lost against Real Madrid in the aggregate scoring at the Bernabeu. We've we've been lackluster for a while. Um, so we need to change our form. We need to change our game. Um, you know, we need to back Tuchel because at the end of the day, you know, he's the only one that, in my opinion, that can that can turn it around. And the players, they need a good kick up the backside. So that's all I can say, really. Yeah, to me, yeah, I swear, again, it wasn't. It was a game of two halves, and <laughs> again, it wasn't. Uh, you could argue it was I see I see worse because uh, 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 West Ham United defended deep and they defended as a unit, so it was very difficult for us to break them down. I, I wouldn't really blame the players. Uh, you know, again, uh, were we that was that one of our best performances? No, you we all know that wasn't. But again, we did well. And one thing that stood out for me was the performance of N'Golo Kante who most people, because he are not realizing, not even considering that he was uh, still fa- fasting, he's still fa- the fasting period for, period for our Muslim brothers. And in most games he's played, is just 15 minutes after breaking his fast, he starts games also, which isn't enough time for his body to process the food he's eaten and replenish, uh, replenish the energy he needs to perform. Because when you're hungry, your, your judgment gets impaired, whether you like it or not. Uh, but then again, that's uh, by the way. So, Nick, I want to come to you. Your thoughts overall on on the on on, on yeah. the game? Yeah, like Matt said, the first half was terrible. Yeah, very bad uh, yeah, performance from every single player. Werner mm-hmm. tries, you know. Werner for me is trying at least. Alonso was trying, and uh, I was very pleased for Alonso. Actually, he played really well. And he was uh, chosen the man of the match by Sky Sports. So, for me, yeah, first half, terrible. Second half, we started a little bit better. And we got we just got better as the game went on. Mm-hmm. And once Tuku changed, changed the, made the right substitution at the right time this time, mm-hmm. 20 minutes left to go, you know, he showed, you know, what they can do. Lukaku came on. He, he, you know, he, he you know, you, you see, when he wants to play, he can play, and he's, you know, he's, he's still important for this team, for this club, for me. You know, it's not as simple just to get rid of him. You know, he got a little, he was trying. He played, you know, really well for twenty minutes. He made that penalty, and that penalty, Georgino made the wrong decision. Shiro picked up the ball and gave it to Lukaku. If he had any uh, again, Nick, so wait a minute. Again, wait. Go ahead. Let me finish it. Mm-hmm. Instead of giving the ball to Lukaku, you know, to take that penalty, was he made the penalty, and he would have uh, uh, done his confidence a world of good. He would have scored. Georgino he's missed a couple like that. of City jumps. Uh, he does all right. He scored a lot, but he does miss. It's not the first time. So I would mm-hmm. have given the penalty to Lukaku if I was too cool. I would have told you, give it to Lukaku. And it would yeah. have been one nil then. We would have won two nil, like I predicted, two nil. But no, yeah. he didn't. So, but we Can carried I... on. Great, great uh, Alonso, great pass to Pulisic, who, who put it away uh, beautifully. I know Matt doesn't like Pulisic, but for, I like Pulisic. You know, he, he has, you know, he, he's got problems with all these injuries, but he's a top player. And he's still young as well. So, you know, he won't be going anywhere very soon. And, um, yeah, after that, we won one nil. The most important thing was the three points uh, last night, uh, yesterday. Not the mm. performance. Because we, need we, need uh, we needed that win to get some confidence going to Old Trafford, where we've been struggling lately. Before, I remember, we never used to lose at Old Trafford. We will lose at home to Man United, but never at Old Trafford, going back as, uh, decades. Now, it's about time we put that right and start winning at Old Trafford again. And there's no reason we can't, we can't do that. But uh, we have to be on top form because United will always be 
you know, they're going to be up for it when they play us, like every team. And they will be up for it. We have to. Yeah, we, we, have we, to we, talk, we will talk about United in a bit. Yeah. So, yeah, but it, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to say something about the penalty yeah, argument you made. Here's the yeah, reason it was it was never going to be easy like this. Even before Lukaku arrived, I think I had uh, some uh, a bit of an argument, not just normal argument on whether Lukaku will start will become our penalty taker. And I said no, that's going to be really difficult. Why? Jorginho is our best, is our vice captain. He's also, you know, a good penalty taker. But again, something has happened of late. Even yeah, he like, missed one think- that you could argue. I'm coming. Yeah, you could argue cost Italy the chances of making it to the World Cup. And yes. he's been in, you know, you could say mentally, I think he's probably still, you know, affected by the fact that he's one of the reasons why Italy would not be going to the World Cup. And it will only take something like that miss before uh, Toko will say, OK, now we have to get another penalty taker. It wasn't never, it was never going to change. Until something like that happens, I hope you get my yeah, point. Yeah, but it happened before. It happened before. Don't forget. Yeah, but still, you still give him a chance. It was going to yeah, take him, like this chance. one happening again. Yeah, when was no, the, when did the last one happen? It's not that long ago. I forgot what game it was. It yeah, but months. the last penalty kick, two penalty kicks for Chelsea Football Club, he scored them both. Yeah, the last. So that's what I'm saying. It was going to take for something like this to happen I before know, now. Toko will say, I'm "Yeah, go ahead." Lukaku won that penalty, and uh, just for Lukaku to get confidence back. That's what I'm saying. I love George Gino. Yeah, know, do you think they trust him that much? I don't think they trust him either. That's the issue. Who? No, he would have. He would have missed. Lukaku doesn't miss penalties. There's uh, that's, that's no way to tell until he takes it, Nick. Let's right, be honest, yes, brother. Just say, Can I? He played mm. well. Don't tell me mm. he didn't play well. No, he did well. So yeah. Ziyech, Can I interject? Ziyech, yeah, Ziyech, go ahead. Wait a minute, man. Ziyech, Lukaku, yeah, you know, all three of them. Ziyech, Lukaku, Pulisic, they, they changed the game. That's what we won. They if did, they yeah. On, the Sox changed the won, game, yeah. It would have been a nil-nil draw if they didn't come on. That's what I'm saying. And kudos, that's why you give, that's why you give uh, Toko credit for making those changes. And he got, yes, he got it course. spot on. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Maddie. Well, first of all, I want to, you know, I mean... I don't think it's. I, I mean, we all know how Jorginho takes pay, penalties. It's not how. It's not the player it's, it himself that needs to be questioned. It's the manner in which he takes it. I mean, this little flick that he does beforehand. Bruno Fernandez does the exact same thing, and Bruno Fernandez missed a penalty doing the exact same thing, and Jorginho does it again. When are we going to? When can we not? When? When is it ever stopped taking a penalty properly? When a, you know, and it has to have this little flick. I don't get why we've got this flick movement still in there. Yeah, uh, you know, and, 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 and it looks like no, goalkeepers no, have figured no, out how to stop Jorginho's penalty. Yeah, no, no, because Jorginho always succeeded. You know, before he started missing a few, he always scored with that little flick. But and, and but for, people are wise enough for it though. Bruno Fernandes, Fernandes was copying Jorginho, and he went and missed. But I understand your point. Yeah, why don't we just a uh, shoot the ball, you know, left or right, or in the middle, like a yeah, normal anyone normal would do? But they want to, <laughs> you know, all this flashy stuff is is stupid for me. Yeah, I, think, uh, I think people, it has, it has people progressed. People have, yeah, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. You know, I, I understand that it's his, it's his um, characteristic, or it's something mm-hmm. that he's gained by being in the Italian league. However. Bruno Fernandes did the exact same thing. People are why the goalkeepers are wising up to it now. The first thing, yeah. they, they, if the first thing they do in training is, we're going to teach you how to react to to a ball coming at you. Then they start mm-hmm. doing penalties. They're going to what they're going to say is is that they've got. Don't forget Liverpool in the next couple of weeks. They've got tactical analytic analytic stat scouts, so they actually sh- go to a game and watch how different teams perform. That's what scouts are all about. The immediate thing they're going to say is, is when Jorginho goes for a penalty, he's going to do a little flick and then he's going to shoot. What we're going to teach you to do is we're going to show you how to defend yourself against that or at least do you know, deal with it. Right. And where, where is he more likely going to put it? 
if you look at the penalty, how he struck it, he was putting it in the middle. He wasn't going to the left-hand side or the right-hand side. And the goalkeeper didn't move because middle. usually and the, the secret behind his penalty is he waits for the goalkeeper to move. But when the goalkeeper yeah. doesn't move, he has a problem. Yeah, exactly. And that's part of the problem. They are not, you know, they're, they're levelling up to it. If Jorginho wants to get better, he needs to remove the flick or he needs to start perfect, or he needs to start training better for it. Because that was absolutely abysmal. That penalty was abysmal. Um, it was. You know, it doesn't look like he was even you know, present that, that when he took man, it. That penalty, that penalty was the uh, second worst in our history. The first one yeah. was Pat Nemi. Do we remember Pat Nemi years ago? Uh, when he, he, he the ball did in Holly move, he <laughs> ran up, he tucked, he, he, he took the ball in the move. The ball was was all right. Strolling to the goalkeeper. You know, you remember that penalty? That's the worst uh, Chelsea penalty in our history. But uh, Georgino was second to, uh, yesterday. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, I'm, yeah. I'm going to quickly go through the chat and, and then probably we we we'll look at our player performances. I want us to talk about Timo Werner. Uh, uh, what were the changes were seen in his uh, re-emergence. Here I have Phantom. And again, if you haven't, go check out Phantom of Many Topics YouTube channel. Great content. Uh, he covers travel videos and quite some good ones to look at, most especially if you love London. He traveled to London recently, and he has some good videos he took in the museum and everywhere that he visited. I think you'd like to see it. Uh, uh, now, let me see here again. Um, uh, uh, again, uh, this is something I don't know if I see anything I'd like us to address. Uh, again, I sorry I missed that. My brother Fahim is in the house. CFC Fahim, if you haven't, go check out CFC Fahim's YouTube channel. Great content, always objective, and that's why I became friends with him. And over time, we we'll become we we'll become brothers. Believe me, if you check out his YouTube channel, whether you're on the panel or in the chat, go check out CFC Fahim YouTube channel. You'd love it. And with that, also I say, if you haven't, be sure. To like the video, we have 48 likes, whereas we've had about 55 people watching before. So we should at least have 50 likes. And the more you like the video, the more the YouTube algorithm will end the stream will be pushed to join us here. So again, let me see if I have anything here that needs to be addressed uh, quickly. I haven't looked at it. Jojinho is very lucky to escape from the miss. He's very quite lucky because uh, otherwise the Chelsea fan base We'll be smothering him right now. Uh, uh, we were lucky Antonio wasn't playing. Otherwise, he would have terrorized our defense. I just don't know why Moyes didn't start him. Uh, I'm always scared of that guy. Uh, and uh, how old is he? That guy is above 30. And he still plays that much. That, he's good. He's really good. And I'm glad he didn't start. Um, I, I am really worried about the FA Cup final. Liverpool have so many decisions going in their favor. Let me know what you mean, just Viola. This team still lacks something. Yep, something when uh, exactly uh, uh, to me uh, from the midfield. Uh, the the goals contribution from our midfield need to improve. It's been awful since the era. You could say, let me just say, Frank Lampard. It's been very awful, uh, and that's not helpful. Uh, I I feel like our attackers should be taking penalties. Yes, Jorginho has got a good record, but attackers need the goals. For confidence, Georgie doesn't need goals in his record. Uh, you could argue that, but I agree. Maybe that may help Lukaku because he's still with us. We need to find a way to get him scoring. And that makes sense. Uh, Nick Blue has a point. Lukaku is actually a very good penalty taker. Uh, uh, it, it was a mistake to have Georgie continue taking uh, them. Uh, strikers need goals for confidence. I knew it, was, it wasn't going to be easy to just uh, say, okay, Lukaku is here now. He will start taking our penalties. I knew that wasn't going to be easy. I think I argued that on my brother's channel, uh, Green Tough. I think somewhere else also, because again, Jorginho is the vice captain, and then his record wasn't bad. But now I think most likely, uh, but then again, Thomas Tuchel, you can't predict what they do. Uh, Jorginho, uh, Lukaku may well start taking the penalty for us. But again, uh, from what I've heard, I think the second up penalty taker for us, I think, is Timo Werner. Third is Kai Havertz. So uh, uh, that remains to be seen whether <laughs> whether it will be Lukaku uh, after Jorginho. Jorginho penalty record for Chelsea this season. He missed one, which was the one, the last one. Hop skip all of them. Okay. Uh, again, absolutely hit with power. 
and precision. But that's uh, that reminds me of uh, Frank Lampard. Uh, again, I scroll through. Uh, could uh, could you like comment? Yes, I'm doing that. I'm not defending Jijinho, but people need to know the facts. Hence, sharing their both tweets. Yep, uh, yep, it makes sense. Uh, again, here he says, uh, Ike is back here. Who doesn't miss a penalty? There's hardly anybody you talk about that hasn't missed one. And uh, Shiloh, Shiloh, where have you been? I hope everything is okay with you, brother. And uh, remember to email me. Uh, to DM me uh, after the show. Maybe we can meet up in Lagos because, uh, like I said, I'll be traveling to Niger tomorrow. And if I have to host the show, it will be earlier so that I'll get a chance to be well-rested before I travel. Any confident and good penalty taker should be a given, uh, not just uh, the attackers. Yep. I am talking about the Stonewall penalty not uh, awarded to Everton in, in the Merseyside derby yesterday. Oh, Mm, that makes sense. London is not blue. Oh, yeah, you can stay in the chat, but uh, I, 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 why, should, why did I even highlight your comments? Uh, coming to you, Ike, your thoughts on the penalty taker for Chelsea Football Club? Uh, well, uh, personally, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I am not really somebody that criticizes people so easily because... Jorginho has been playing penalty over the years, and we don't know how good he is. So he missed one yesterday, which was pretty bad, and you know, at that point, we needed it. But he missed it. I was shocked. But at the same, I'll give you benefit of the doubt. But preferably, I'll prefer an attacker taking the penalty. That would have how given about his mindset? Yeah, so you, you're making example. the same argument as you're making a, the same argument as Nick Blue. Our attacker should take it, and that maybe yeah. will help Lukaku. Go ahead, brother. That, that, that would have um, maybe given Lukaku some more, some confidence, some needed confidence going forward, because we know we need somebody to come up and score goals for us. But at this point, I know Harvard is doing his bit. I look, um, Vanna is doing his best and all that, but we need some attacker to come in and contribute with some more goals. So I believe that penalty mm. yesterday, if Lukaku has taken it or if he had scored, because it's not a given that when he takes it, he's going to score. But if he had taken it and he scores, that would have given him, given him going forward, attacker taking the penalty. And if they want to stick with Georgie, you're fine. You see that skipping thing and all that, he should get rid of it. So yeah, that's yeah, I, I I agree with you. And here is the thing: I think uh, Jorginho also we must consider his mental uh, state at this point because that means uh, for Italy will hunt him for a while. Uh, I, I think we should have considered that it was a penalty miss too. So I think, but then again, y y the benefit of the doubt, if you ask me, has been given to him, and he didn't take it. Uh, I think it's about time he maybe take a break, like on the front lap, but he did take a break from taking penalties for us until maybe we see, uh, uh, you know, we see his, you know, his uh, state, mental state improve. Overall, he didn't do bad, but that penalty miss shows that that miss for Italy is still hunting him. It, wasn't, it, it looked like as if he wasn't really sure what to do. On the front lap, but I think at the time he changed, he stopped skipping before taking penalties. But this time, there's more to that miss than just uh, his skipping. Because also, I think opposition goalkeepers have figured out if he skips, just yeah. stay where you are, then you yes, get to yes. see where he puts the ball because he hardly hits it with power. But that's by the way. I'm going to go through the chat. I'll let Danny Dorido stay there, but I'm going to be skipping his uh, his uh, his um, imputes uh, but he, because he provides value to the... Uh, hi, Choma. Uh, and Choma also, have I said uh, hello to Choma? Choma, can you hear me? I'm an uh, email of my... Sorry, pardon me for speaking my dialect. I have to speak it when I see my people. I hope uh, that you, you guys don't mind. Madi, I hope you don't mind. And uh, Nick, I, don't, I hope you don't mind. Uh, Ike, I hope you don't mind also. Uh, I'm in Nigeria. Uh, here so... <laughs> oh, okay. Thank so, you. <laughs> no problem. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, Tobacco says Jorginho can take them, but from next season, attackers or strikers. No, we not. We need to switch now. I don't. I, I don't trust Jorginho's mental uh, uh, mental state, state right now. Since he, uh, he, uh, Italy didn't make it to the World Cup, and he's partly the reason why that didn't happen. Uh, again, uh, Tobago here says then why he should. Okay, that's the conversation between them. 
and uh, met, uh, maybe Jojiho in his mind that this World Cup was going to be his last because of his age. Thank you. Great point also. So we must consider his state of mind at this point and not give him, not allow him to take penalties because it's not that easy to be fixed. And, and missing the World Cup and you knowing you missed the penalty in that game uh, isn't something that you can easily you know, deal with like that and you forget about it. Really get um, out is uh, I, Marquinhos. I Sorry? think you know when you've got when you've got the likes of Ronaldinho that takes penalties for Portugal and he's a lot older. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he, jo, Cristiano Ronaldo's opinion would be let's bounce back. So I, I mean, and Jorginho is a lot younger, shall I say, than uh, than than Cristiano Ronaldo. So, I mean, you know, it, yeah, OK, I, I, I concede that any pe player can miss penalties. It's how he bounces back and he hasn't bounced mm. back yet. Um, so, yeah, that's how I would say about that. So, yeah, I, I, since I'm still with you, Maddie, let's talk about Team Roverna. Uh Some people thought, again, and this is me, well, I'm sounding like a broken record now because after every game, we still talk about him. I think he wasn't that bad in that game. He, he did well, and it looks like he's he's improved on the ball also. Uh, he's not just uh, trying to go for a separate option. Your thoughts on how well he's been doing since the Southampton game? I think he's been playing reasonably well. In fact, actually, I, we're seeing more of a sort of Bundesliga Werner, uh, the one that we've been promised for, for many seasons. Um, and I think it's a lot of... I think the problem is we, we, we belittle our players... And we did it, and we've done it for so many seasons. There was a player called Fernando Torres. You look at the likes of Fernando Torres; he was belittled when he missed against Manchester United. He lost a lot of confidence. And if we don't install some confidence into Timo Werner, he will go the exact same way. That's why he's been really quiet. But because the fans have been on his side, because Tuchel's backing him, he's getting more and more confident. We need to back the guy. As much as we need, as much as people disagree with me, if you back your players and you back your club, they will they will continue to bring results. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I feel as though that you know it, it's all well and good to belittle players when they when you need to, or you know or even criticise players. But at the end of the day, I feel as though that. Um, he, you know, I feel as though that you know you need to be backing your players before you start criticising them. But I think he played well yesterday. I think you know, yeah, he didn't score, but you know, it, but we move forward. You know, and I, I can see him starting against Manchester United. And if he does, he'll put. Uh, hopefully, he'll put in a shift in. Yeah, I, I think that we should start being concerned about Jorginho penalty misses. Triple here said Jorginho missed two penalties in the, in the World Cup and also in the Euros. So it's, and again, he's missed uh, uh, one that you could argue is the reason why Italy will not be going to, uh, you know, to um, to the World Cup. But that's by the way. So I'm, I'm going to come to you, uh, Ike. Your thoughts on, uh, I, I don't know if I've asked you about the penalty. Your thoughts on Werner, his performance since uh, the game against Southampton. Uh, again, I think he deserves uh, to stay at Chelsea Football Club. We're still, we we're started to see flashes of the Werner that we hoped to see when we paid that much money for him. Your thoughts? Yeah, um, personally, I what I see with Chelsea fans, we are too reactionary. We, oh, we, say, say it louder. Yeah, what I see with Chelsea fans, we react too so much, you know. Mm -hmm. And we are quick to judging players. I understand, yes, we money has been paid. I understand expectations. I understand of I understand passion. Mm -hmm. I understand that we, we expectations and all that, yes. But we should not take the human the human aspect out of these people. They are human beings like or they can make mistakes. Yes, I understand. One thing I see with um Vana, Lukaku and the rest of them, if you watch, we have too many touches around the eighteen yard balls. No mm. quick passing, no quick taking, too much holding the ball. And when you hold the ball for too much, you give the opposition defender to take shape. And once they take shape, it becomes difficult for you to go through. Look at what happened with West Ham yesterday. Jorginho was sleeping on the ball. You saw it. He sleeps on the ball too much. And when you do that, 
you give those defenders time, mm. you know, to recover and to take shape. And once they recover and stay in that shape, tell me how will you go through? It's not possible. So when when you play for when you are playing, I don't know if you had played. I played while I was younger and all that. When what you are told as a midfielder who you have to give your attacker your football, once you receive the first thing you look up and see the run of your attacker. That's why most of them I don't blame Lukaku. I don't blame him. Because number one, look at it. He has never been given a ball or he has not been given much and he missed. I don't know if you understand that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I'm with you. That is because yeah, again, uh, True Blue here says, sorry, let me just take this. Uh, this uh, True Blue says, yes, singing the uh, Bundesliga player because he fits off Hazard. Havad. Again, that's the truth. I think it took us time to uh, maybe to realize that's what we need to do because at uh, the Bundesliga, he played off of another striker just as he's doing with Havertz now, and that brings the best out of him. Timo is not uh, uh, not an out striker. Frank Lampard tried that and found out the hard way that he is and won. Uh, again, but if you play him there, you see flashes of brilliance because when he gets spaces, he he do some damage against the opponent. But go ahead, brother. Exactly, I was coming to that. If you watch when he plays for Leipzig, he was playing with Porsen. I don't know if you remember Porsen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Posse was a bigger guy. He plays off him, and he was playing very good. And when Posse is playing, he takes away the defender that Timo have chance to run into, and he plays. And that was because the, the midfielders were releasing the balls quicker for him. But our midfielders, like we got, like uh, what's his name, uh, Jorginho, he holds the ball for too long before he assesses his passing leg. And at the end of the day, those passing legs are blocked off, and the defender takes that shape. It becomes difficult. That's why you see too many side passes, short passes to the defender, to the goalkeeper, and all that. And this takes away your, your attacking instinct. And who, who is to be blamed for it? The attackers. Lukaku is not somebody that can play like Timo Werner. But Timo Werner can play off him because of the way Lukaku plays. But if you release mm. the ball on time to Lukaku, if you release the ball on time to Harvard, then Timo Werner can play better. But if you don't, then you hold the ball. The defender, two defenders are on your attacker. How can they win? How can they play? They can't. So if we are talking about our attackers getting more goals and playing better, we should first of all talk to our midfielders to release balls on time. For example, you saw the goal that Christian Pulis scored against West Ham yesterday. Messi Man took the ball from the midfield. He drove almost immediately before the defenders could recover and take that shape. He already gave the ball to Alonso. And Alonso one time one time cross and the ball was into the into the 18 yard box. And what happened? That was a goal because the defender could not recover on time. It's not because of actually the red card. It was because the ball was quick, was played quicker than the, the defenders recovering. You understand? So that's what I see. That's the problem I see with our, you know, midfield linking up with the attackers, and that's actually what taking the, um, making our our attackers not effective. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, uh, uh, that's a, a great input right there. Saying uh, passing the ball uh, side to side. Yeah, but I think Jorginho do a lot of that. I think he, but he was uh, kudos to him. I think he found Alonso before Alonso put in that cross. I think I think that's, that's a, yeah, it could to him. And again, we need to you know uh, uh, you know pass the ball quicker than we did uh, than we did in the first half, and then in the second half that improved uh, quite a lot. And my brother here is talking to the bag again. If you're here and if you haven't, go and check out CFC for him. Great channel, great content as usual. And Chama says, why doesn't TT correct Jorginho? Uh, uh, because this is how he's been playing all all his life. And, and I don't want to use this an Igbo adage, Igbo adage, but I'm going to say it in English. In my place, it says you don't learn how to, if you're left-handed uh, as a child, you don't learn how to, you know, use your right hand and become right-handed when you grow up. I think that's, Jorginho is used to playing in that way. And I don't think that's something that changes now, but sometimes he's quicker than usual and that helps. So uh, uh, before we go into player ratings, uh, Nick, your thoughts on Timo Werner's, you know, uh, He's been putting in some good performances of late. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very happy with Werner. You know, especially the FA Cup semi final Southampton mm -hmm. game. Um, yeah, those two games. Yeah, he wasn't that bad yesterday. But, you know, no, he, he, wasn't. Wasn't, he, he wasn't happening for him or mm -hmm, anyone mm -hmm. else up front. That's mm -hmm. why Tuku, I'm glad Tuku changed it because uh, we needed to win badly. 
good job we did. Yeah, but mm-hmm. now he's improved. Uh, he's 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 come. He's become more alive now than before. You know, he was like in a show. Now he's come out of his show. He looks a much better player. Yeah, I'm very happy with him. I hope he just continues like this to the end of the season. Really, uh, yeah. Yeah, I agree with Tolu Paul here. He says, uh, let's not forget, it, it, it's it's like teams now understand how we play. Since Crystal Palace, our teams have been uh, intercepting our passes uh, through the middle. Uh, I think uh, we've been predictable in most cases, and it comes down to our midfielders not being a dynamic. That changes only when we have uh, a conversation on the pitch. I think uh, that Manchester City did the same thing to us. But the key here to stopping Chelsea, I think most teams have found out, is just press Chelsea aggressively. The moment you do that, I think the, the usually uh, our, players, our players are usually startled, and, and we seem not to you know to be clueless on what to do with the ball. If you look at all the games we've lost, all the games we've played poorly, the difference is that teams are, uh, you know press us aggressively. With that, I want to say we have just we have just uh, four. We have just four uh, uh, four subscribers. Well, four subscribers, uh, subscribers away from reaching 1,300 subscribers. And I think we can do that before the end of the show. And if you haven't, please tell people more about Chelsea's Perspective. Tell people more about the Blue Morning Show. I, I think if you enjoy it, I think they will enjoy it too. And again, if you haven't, be sure to like the video and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't. That will go a long way. We have a few minutes to round off, and I believe we can get to... 1,300 subscribers before we end uh, the show. And we also can get at least, you know, 60 likes. We're at 53 right now before the end of the show. Uh, th- thank you for that great input, Olu. Uh, again, this is some uh, Fahim conversations between uh, those and the chart. We're going to go into player ratings immediately. Uh, I'll start with you, uh, uh, Maddie. Wh- how do you rate Mendy and what do you think of his performance on the day? I think Mendy saved us a couple of times. Um, I felt as though that Mendy played played really well. Um, mm-hmm. I'd say probably about. I think I'll put, put about maybe a seven out of ten. Maybe. What okay. do you think? I, I think that's that's a fair enough rating. He did well. And if you're in the chat, let us how you'd rate uh, Mendy. Uh, uh, for you, uh, Ike, how would you rate Mendy? Yeah. Um, I... Like 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 you had me say a few minutes ago, I mm. I don't really criticize players too much because I know the effort they put in, and mm. I know once you play once you play in such stage, is is something else. You know, we just sit down, we watch, and we talk. It's not as easy as that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'll give him seven, seven or eight or eight. Uh, that's fair. Mm. That's, I think that's fair enough because he's been trying, but I know he need to do better with his decision. I need to, he need to do better with his uh, passing and all that, but still, he has done a bit. I'll give him seven or eight. Okay, seven or eight. If you're yeah. in the chat, again, let us know how you read Menti. Uh, my brother, Hans Master, says here, Menti didn't get tested. He was still uh, was bad in his distribution. Yeah, he made a, quite a, uh, a few bad distributions there. But that's, by the way, uh, 7.5 here I'm seeing. Uh, Menti stopped a double attempt against... Yeah, he did. I think I remember that. Uh, even though it was going to be offside, that was good save. So I'd give him a seven for me. Seven, a seven is, uh, I think, the average from everything I'm seeing in the chat is a seven. I think that's a good enough rating for uh, Mendy there. So we'll go to on the left hand side here. And I think during the show, I think I argued, Nick, correct me if I'm wrong. And Nick, you haven't said your rating for Mendy, sorry. Yeah, uh, Mendy didn't have hardly anything to do, really. So mm. you can't give him. I'll give him a six point five, just for standing there. Yeah. Okay. Six point five. Okay. And I want to say, um, our body Fairview here says that congratulations, Kuchila, on the tremendous growth of the channel. I remember when it was me and still be <laughs> only in. Yeah. Yeah. Big up, Nick Blue, for these contributions. I can't thank Nick enough. Nick is my brother from another mother, and I love him. And I'm, but I'm always happy that I'm further away from him whenever we're discussing Chelsea so he doesn't stretch his arms and punch me because he loves Chelsea that much. And again, <laughs> more thanks to you, yeah. uh, Bobby Fairview, for always being available to support the channel. I will never forget that. And to everyone else, uh, uh, Steve Chelsea also, Fahim, Hamsmaster, 
and uh, the, uh, the queen of the house, uh, 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 um, just Viola, I, I can't tell you how much. It, it, in most cases, I have to discuss the title with her. My brother, Almighty Blues, and Kit, who is not here. Uh, my brother also from uh, Green Tough. All those people, and I'll make a special video on that. I can't name everybody off the top of my head. Uh, Harrison says, I feel Jorginho remains the best penalty taker during the training session. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, during training session. That's a good one to see there. Uh, and I appreciate that comment. And Hans Master says, uh, Olu, I don't know. Okay, they're talking about something else here. I pray and hope new owners don't mess up the relationship between Chelsea and Tuka. I don't think they will. I think they will prioritize making sure it remains intact. Uh, so we can agree the average here is seven. And for the left wing, uh, left uh, center back position, if you remember during the pregame show, Nick, I argued, I think Aspi will most definitely start, start on the left hand side and Chaloba, Chaloba on the right. I remember, I think Fahim yeah. didn't think that will happen. Uh, so your rating for, for Chaloba, since I'm with you, and if you're in the chat, your rating for Chaloba, please, for uh, Aspi, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, Chalaba, yeah. Well, ask for the equator, ask the equator. We're on the left uh, hand side. Ask me, yeah, you know, uh, ask me wasn't brilliant, actually. Uh, for me, it was just average six. A six for you for Ask me? Yeah. Okay, Mighty, you're, you're rating for Ask me. Completely agree with Nick Blue, actually. I think he was a bit shaky, actually. Uh, yeah, really game. Shaky. Yeah. Um, I don't think he. I, I think we're we're seeing a, a different side to Aspi now because I think it's a little bit of age that's creeping in, but I think it's also inconsistency. Um, and I think you know it might be a, a worthwhile time to look for a suitable replacement for Aspi. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, he's been a great servant to the club, and you know, and all the best. You know, great to him. Um, glad he's able to stay on. You know, for a contract extension. Um, but I think today's before. I think yesterday's performance was quite shaky. So I'd say maybe five point five, maybe a six. A six, you said. Hmm. Okay. I think the yeah, average I... for you could argue. Yeah, the average. So I think you can argue. I can haven't gotten your rating for Aspie. Yeah. Um. Actually, I have seen the best of Aspie. I have seen the average Aspie. But what I'm seeing now, no, 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 no. So, <laughs> because I, I used to, I remember he used to be like, no person beats him one on one. But these days, I can't have that. So I see, I see, respect him. I see, regard him as a very good defender. But I'll give him mm -hmm. six, six. Yeah, six. Okay, a six. Okay, and, and just be all like, can you let me know why you sit at the rating today? Because you know it's going to be everywhere, right? I think that's the case. I uh, since I'm with you, Ike, how about uh, Tiago Silva? Tiago Silva, yeah, I'll leave him at 7.5 or 8 because without him, I don't think I don't think we will survive that yesterday. His stability, his composure, his maturity, and his uh, his born. Playing that uh, contribution, that's that's good. So I'll leave him at seven point five or eight. Okay, seven point five or eight. Okay, uh, 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 Mighty, your rating for Thiago Silva. What can I say? Bargain, you know, for what he is—a world-class uh, defender. Um, gets stuck in. Played really well yesterday. I was actually quite—I was really impressed, you know. And he's mm -hmm. he's been impressing me all season. Um, and to be honest with you, I mean. It's nice to have a bit of maturity at the back, really. Somebody who's an absolute baller. I'd say it's over an 8 or an 8.5 for me. Yeah, yeah. And, and your, your thoughts, Nick? Yeah, Silva, you know, what, what a player. He always gets, for me, he never gets below 7. Only, I think, against the Brentford game, he got uh, below 7. But, uh, mm. yeah, he, no, he was good. Uh, he has to get an eight, eight for me, yeah. Yeah, I think the average is eight, and he has something to highlight here. Unlucky with that shot he had, that Werner, he, Werner, had Werner not deflected that shot, I think it was going into the net because yeah. he went for <laughs> placement. He didn't go for power. No. If you remember, Madi, did you see that Thiago Silva shot after that run? He didn't go for power. He went for placement, but Mendy deflected it and made it easier for, uh, what's his name, to stop it, the... The West Ham goalkeeper to stop it. 
Yeah. Well, this is it. You know, people people are slandering Werner, but at least you know he he gave it a good go, didn't he? So mm-hmm. yeah, no, he did well. Yeah, he did well. All right, so let's go for Chaloba. I'm going to start with uh, this late comma here. Somebody that just joined the panel. Uh, declared your rating for Chaloba since you're there. And welcome to the Hello, panel, everyone. by the way, brother. Hello, brother. I, 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 I miss you. I miss, I miss, the you. Panel. I miss you. I know you're yeah. busy. Yeah, no, I was just. Gonna, I thought you looked like you're ending, and I wasn't going to jump on. But I got to jump on. Just say hi to everyone. How you guys are doing? Maybe throw yeah. an opinion or two. Hello, Keep Nick Blue in his corner. True, Nick. Make yeah, sure Nick doesn't get out of control. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, ready for Chalaba? You have a batch of True Blue again. That's it. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm listening. Uh, um, um, man, he had he, he had a good game. I think like I got, I give him more credit because he's been he, he's been uh, what would you call it isolated out of the team. You know, mm-hmm. he, he done a few mistakes, and he was pushed out of the team. Um, so for him to come back, keep calm, cool, collected, had a had a good game. I'll give him more credit. I'll, I'll give him like a seven and a half. Yeah, I think for me it's a seven two, and everybody, pretty much everybody in the chat agrees it's a seven and a half. Uh, uh, uh Nick, your rating for Chaloba? Yeah, yeah, very good game. Sex, especially second half. Yeah, he he had a good mm-hmm. game. Can't, can't get uh, uh, less than seven. Yeah, seven for me. He done well. He he nearly made mm-hmm. a mistake, but he 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 came back and uh, sorted it out. That was good to see. You know, when he come back, if you remember that the incident. He gave the ball mm-hmm. away in the penalty area, but he came mm-hmm. back, and that, that was yep. great. To yep. see. He, he dashed yeah, he he dashed back and stopped the guy from yeah. taking the shot. Yep. Yeah, I always like Chalaba. Chalaba sh- shouldn't have been frozen out that quick because he made mm-hmm. some mistakes. You know, other players have made more mistakes than him. He's a good player. Good. Uh, he's got a great future at Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a seven for you. Seven. Yeah. Okay, Ike, let's just go for the numbers because we've been streaming for three hours. Ike, you're rating for Chaloba. Yeah, I'll give him seven. It's a little drop-off of the Chaloba we saw at the beginning of the season. Just a mm. little drop-off. Yeah, so I'll give him seven. He's a good player. I love him. Especially okay. from the academy. Trust me, I love him. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Maddie, your rating? Definitely a 7.5 for me. Um, I think we should play him more than Chris- Christensen, to be quite honest with you. So um, mm-hmm. that's my opinion. Yeah, I don't even think Chris Nelson will get a chance again, except if Thiago Silva is injured because he's capable on his day. He's capable of leading the back line, but that's by the way I wouldn't even consider him. Uh, uh, since I'm with you, uh, um, Maddy, how about Marcos Alonso? Do you know what? I think if he hadn't got that assist, I think he had, he would have had a quiet game, to be honest. Um, but I think he played well, to be honest. Apart from having the quiet game, I'd say about maybe a seven, maybe a seven, seven point five. Yep, I think he did well, even defensively, if you ask me. Uh, uh, Ike, your thoughts on Marcus Alonso? Yeah, I'll give him seven. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my brother right there. I'll give him seven. Mm-hmm. You know, we've, we've seen the best of Alonso. We see the worst of Alonso. We see. So yesterday. It was a good one, you know. <laughs> so I'll give him seven. Yeah, yeah, I think he did quite well. Uh, 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 Nick Blue, your thoughts on Alonso? Yeah, I think he did uh, very good yesterday. Uh, you know, people are so quick to criticize him, but they forget, you know, what an important player he is for this uh, squad. You know, he always comes up with something special in mm. the past. How many times he. He saved, he, he, you know, he got winners for us at Tottenham, Arsenal, you know, mm-hmm. big things. Yeah, a lot of them very well yesterday. He, he has to be a seven. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the cloud. Yeah, but Bill Ryan um, recognised that he is one of the older players and he has played a lot of games. There's something that yeah. people have missed. And he still, and he still looked very fresh out there in that game. I was worried that he, he was one of the next players to to kind of break down. As you can see, Rudiger, everyone's everyone's hitting fatigue at this point of the season. And mm-hmm. the, and some play, some of our players have played way too many games. And uh, he's one of he's up there as well. So <laughs> I'll give him um which I'll, I'll give him seven and a half. Yeah he, he seven four, four and, and Alonso half. comes out. Yeah. Uh, it's good to yeah, see I him think he's still well. looking pretty fresh. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so we can say the average right now is, yeah, seven from everything I've seen. Uh, uh, I think everybody has written him, and even people in the chat. Uh, 8.5, I think the average for him is seven. So the clock, while, while I'm with you, let's do uh, um, RLC, Love to Stick. Yeah, he's been, he's been copying some stick. I think he had a lot better game. Um, no, he, uh, yeah, I, I agree. He didn't have a bad game. I think it's actually one of the reasons why we did well uh, on that right hand side. Uh, but go ahead. Yeah, so p people, um, this little, it, it's it's interesting. He's playing a unique role. So he's not just playing wing back. He's not playing the up and down wing back. He's playing the side to side wing back. So mm -hmm. instead of instead of running down the line, he 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 goes into the midfield. And remember how we used to say, like someone like Mount used to drop in, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. instead of that, he 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 cuts in, right? And he becomes the midfield free. And then sometimes you can see he's still getting used to it because even sometimes Mount came back and he should run forward. He didn't know how to run forward, and, and the players are pointing. So he's still getting used to the role. So you got to give him credit. It's, it's very him. He's he's doing something new, uh, and it's tactically teams are tactically. Uh, know how to handle it yet as well. So mm -hmm. um, I'm going to give him – I want to give him a high I'll just give him a seven then because – Yeah, yeah I'd he, give he, him he a seven well. too. Yeah, I think he, he did yeah. well. And I think if we, if you look – because he invites, he helps the midfielders the midfield a lot. And he, he's, he creates chances too. Uh, again, he puts in some good crosses also. But I think he'll get – I think Thomas Tucker has decided to play him mainly in that role, and I think he's been executed and executing it quite well, if you ask me. Uh, so, Nick, your thoughts on uh, Ruben Loves' stick? Yeah, yeah, he, he didn't do brilliantly, I would say, but he was okay. I think, uh, yeah, 6.5 or 7. I, I think it's 6.5 for me, mm -hmm. yeah. He didn't okay, do anything uh, special, yeah. Yeah, how about you, Ike? Yeah, I'll, I'll give him seven. Uh, so yeah, seven. Well, if that guy have uh, a little more, uh, like, let me say, if that guy had the brain of Messi Mount, he would have done better for himself. Because what I see him, most the role he did yesterday, he didn't really understand what he need to do sometimes. I remember... Last part of the game yesterday. Mm -hmm. Last part of the game yesterday, Messi Matt was holding the ball close to where he had to go. He was telling him move, move, and he wasn't moving. Yeah, but he had to he remind him. I remember moved, that incident. Yeah, when he eventually moved, and they gave him the ball, Chelsea almost scored. In other words, if he had, if he had known what he was, he was, uh, he was supposed to do and moved on time. Definitely, that would have been a better ball. So that's why I said, if he had the brain of missing out, definitely he would be a better player. But I th I like him. I rate him high because he's more of a midfielder than played down the flank. So I give him seven. Yeah, I think he gets better as as uh, he gets better as he you know as he plays more games. Uh, uh, Maddie, your your turn to rate uh, uh, Ruben. Uh, can I go for a seven? Um, I think to be fair, I think he played okay. <laughs> Um, yeah. Maybe you said yeah. that lucky on the price is right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, is, is it bad seven. enough that I'm, uh, I'm old enough to know that what the price is right is? <laughs> oh, I'm in the same boat, so don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I definitely say seven for me. Um, I think he's a good player. I think he's a good rotational player, um, mm. but he's not. A, he's not a first team player for me. Um, you know, I think when when we eventually get a wing back. And possibly strengthen up our midfield. I can see him being a sub, a rotational player or a substitute, or a substitute mm -hmm. player. But that's my opinion. Yeah, let me not let this influence the rating. I just want to compare what we rated. And, and Marty, since I'm with you, let's start with Kante. Your rating for Kante? Oh, amazing! Um, I think he's a good player. Um, yeah, I think he he really really turned up from like the past few games where he just seemed so. He looked tired, actually, in the last few games. I think he looked tired. Yeah, that's um, because probably he is still fasting. Yeah. Um, but I think he put in a shift in yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. I mean, I'd say about maybe an eight, maybe, maybe a, you know, seven, maybe an eight, I'd say. I'd go, let's go mm. 7.5. Let's go get down the middle. 
Okay, let's see what others rate him. I think I, I rate him an eight. If, if I, if you ask me, Ike, you're rating for Kante. Yeah, Kante is the only player in Chelsea that is allowed to make mistakes and get away with it. <laughs> okay. Because of what and he doesn't doing. make too many bad mistakes. He does yeah. more good than his mistakes. Yeah, yeah, I think you could argue that. Go ahead, brother. Because of what he has done over the years, he doesn't make too mm -hmm. much mistakes. But when he makes mm -hmm. one, we allow him to get away with it. Mm -hmm. So. For yesterday, I'll give him it. Okay, let's see what ha what we have in the chat. But then I'll go to Nick. Nick, your turn. Kante. Uh, Nick is still out. Declad. I'll I'll bring out the new. Bring in the new Nick. Uh, uh, Declad, your thoughts on Kante. Mm. I don't know. I, I don't think he had his best of games. Uh, he, he's been out of sorts. But still, he was one of our best players. Yeah. Um, still, there, there was it was fifty fifty. He did some great, great stuff, and he did some bad stuff. He was he was late to some stuff. Um, it was a little bit frustrated. He was a bit out of. He was a bit out of position, and a bit like. I think he didn't know how to play with Loftus Cheek as well. Mm -hmm. um, he did look a sorts. I think people, some people don't see some of those things, uh, and and I do, and I think it's a bigger deal because, you know, once once he's out of place, then uh, then a lot of people are exposed and, and things like that. So I'm not going to give him a high rating. I think I'll give him a six. For my average. Mm hmm. Yeah, big up, the you you have uh, you have uh, Bobby Fabi giving you kudos. Uh, uh, I wouldn't do that. To yeah, the, I would just say the Cloud is talking nonsense, but I wouldn't even. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But the fact <laughs> is, I get you. I understand your point, brother. Uh, I think for Kante, I think uh, what I'm seeing here, I think the average is uh, eight here. We have seven here, seven point five here. And Marty said eight, right? Okay, we get Nick Blue start. Let's see what the average is. Nick, your rating for uh, Kante. Yeah, Kante is Kante. You know, you know, don't forget he's fasting. He's, he, but he showed a lot of energy still. Mm -hmm. Even last night when we didn't play very well. He was up and down the pitch more than anyone else. So mm -hmm. for, me, for me, he has to be eight, I think. Yes, eight. Yeah, I think the client look at it so you don't say I'm cheating because you give him a lower number. I think the average is no, no, uh, seven, yeah, seven I, point five. I, I think I was unique. I think I was unique, but I think people yeah, yeah. Um, declare, declare you because... always want to be unique. You always be Sorry? unique, uh, <laughs> unique uh, marks anyway. He wants to no nah, because uh, people, to be people only, because can't they hold on? Can't they gets away with a lot? Everyone knows that. No, yeah. he doesn't. He, he, yeah, yeah, but no, he, I haven't seen anyone give can't they bad rating when he plays bad. Um, but he did a play yeah. bad. He did a play yeah, bad. So yeah. he played, but in he this game, you, you saw him up and down the pitch, yes. and you saw him in the third half, right? And you thought, wow, you know why? They, if you noticed, they um they give him room. If Kante is at the edge of the box, they don't care. They focus on everyone else because they know Kante is going to pass most of the time. Uh, <laughs> Kante is not an attacking threat. He, he, was close to some of the questions. he was close to scoring as well. Uh, yeah, how many goals he scored? Yeah, and, you know, there's, there's if, different. If you... There's different in priority, and when you're what you yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna fight about that yeah. now. Nick, Nick, tell me, give me your judging her rating. Don't tell me uh, it's so, one. Junior was a bad. But uh, the penalty was ridiculous. Um, he should have given it to Lukaku. And for not giving it to Lukaku, he gets uh, 6.5. Really? Because he didn't give it to Lukaku? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Declared your rating for Jorginho. Maybe I should change mine. I, I was going to give him a lower score, but I think I should give him more for not giving it to Lukaku. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I never knew. I never knew. to say that. Lukaku Believe me, just diving, go ahead. So, yeah, I never knew Lukaku was good at diving, so that was new to, new for me, and mm -hmm. uh, something he can bring to his game. Uh, if he if he can't bring the touches, he can he can dive on the floor. Uh, mm -hmm. I know it's pretty hard because for someone that big, when you hit the floor, it hurts more. So kudos to him. But as for Jorginho, <laughs> um. Like, Jorginho is, is similar. 
uh, I don't know how to put it. Just some good and bad, mm-hmm. and then that penalty. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what? He 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 did what he usually does, but he stuffed it up because Fabianski moved, and all he had mm-hmm. to do was do what he does and hit it to the other side. And I think he was just late with it, and he, he just didn't do it, and he mm-hmm. just guessed at the end. So, uh, and, and being that almost cost us three points, I'm going to give him a five. A oh, five, okay. Uh, 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 Ike, you're rating for Jorginho. Ike, you're rating for Jorginho. Okay, uh, Maddie, you're rating for Jorginho. Why we wait for Ike to join in? Is it Maddie? acceptable for Is it acceptable for me to put him as a five? <laughs> I mean, is it acceptable? I think he's. One, I think he was one of the worst players on the pitch that day. Um, you know, um, but that's my opinion. Um, you know, it was just. I mean, what it was the pass going to? Um, you know, he did have one pass. That he passed back, and you know, he, he forced the defender to go backwards. So you know, to try and retrieve a ball. Um, the penalty wasn't great. Um, I, 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 I think to be honest with you, I'm kind of with some people in on social media. Really, I think he needs mm-hmm. to go. Um, I think we need to get somebody like a, a Chua Many in, um, or somebody like that that would actually do better. Um, so yeah, I'd say a five. So yeah, we can agree the rating is five, but overall, I think he wasn't bad. I think he also uh, retrieved the ball and occasions for us. And he had a hand in the goal, actually. I think he found Alonso before Alonso crossed, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that was the case. But that's, by the way, I think he didn't have such a bad game. But we can agree the rating is overall five for him. Uh, Ike, you're, you're rating for Jorginho quickly because we've streamed for three hours plus. We want to run off as soon as possible. Yeah, I'll give Jorginho five. Okay, everybody agrees. Let's go for the number 10 man for the day. Ike, quickly, we're getting the feedback from you. Ike, your rating for Mason Mount. Yeah, Mason Mount was really uh, active yesterday, so I'll give him 7.5 hits. 7.5 for Mount. And if you are in the chat, let us know your rating for Mason Mount. Uh, Nick Blue, your rating for Mason Mount. Seven. A seven, okay. Uh, I declared your rating for Mount. Mm. Yeah, I think so. I think seven sounds fair. Um, he was the only one that was trying to get the shot. Like we were just passing around. No one really wanted to shoot. He did. Uh, he, uh-huh. he still looks for me over over overplayed. He's one of the most played players in, in Europe. I think when I looked up the stats, when you throw mm-hmm. in international time as well. Um, I hope we don't break the kid, but I think he's struggling uh, fitness wise. So if, when you see him out there busting his balls. I think uh, you got to give him a bit more credit, so I'll give him seven. Yeah, yeah. I think I would give him a more than eight, given that he's been overplayed. Uh, I think he, he's. I think he's played most games more, more than any other player in that team. I, I think yeah. he's been, and I think he's improved quite a lot. Uh, again, I I'll give him an eight. That's for me. I think I see a lot of sevens there, sevens there in the chat. Uh, 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 Maddie, your your turn. Your ratings for Mount. Money, Mace, you know, Mason Minerals Mount. Um, <laughs> yes, Mineral. <laughs> do you know what? I, I'm going to go with Declared. I'm going to say seven. I mean, he's a good. He, he played. He played brilliantly yesterday. yesterday. Uh, mm-hmm. I think. It was, I just think he was just a seven, though. That's the only thing. Yeah, I think a seven. It's good for him on the day, but he was good. He wasn't that bad. Just that he was unlucky. All his tries are at the post. Then uh, you know. I think he could have scored one brilliant one, the one he took one time that was going to the 90th angle, but I think he went over the bar. But that's, by the way, uh, uh, how about, uh, Maddy, since I'm still with you, how about uh, Werner? I think if he'd have scored, I think he'd have done, I think he'd have got a higher rating. Um, it was just a shame he couldn't get a power on that shot that, that, that came in, or the cross that came in. Um, mm-hmm. I'd say Werner played all right yesterday. I mean, he didn't play as well as he's he's done for the last few games, and he didn't score. Um, so I'd say a seven, possibly. A seven for Werner. Okay. Uh, if you're in the chat, let us know your rating for Werner. 
Are oh, you say seven, Madi? Uh, I, I declare your rating for Vana. Um, you know, as much as he looked, he looked bright and 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 brought that speed and stuff. He he gave the ball way too many, gave it away too many times. There was no. Sometimes he wanted to pass the ball, he wouldn't pass it. Link up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, even though I agree with him sometimes because sometimes it was Lukaku, but I uh, yeah for me he lost the ball a lot and I can't give him a seven. I got I'll give him a five. Okay, that's you, team of Werner Hader. Uh, <laughs> Nick, your turn for Werner. Yeah, Neil. You know, like I said, he's improved a lot lately. Uh, it wasn't a his brilliant game yesterday, but it wasn't any player's brilliant game really. So mm -hmm. for me, he has to get a seven with the others, really. Seven. Okay. Uh, uh, and, and for you, Ike, your rating for Werner? Yeah, seven. It's okay. Seven. Yeah, I think that's the average for Werner. Sorry, declared. Declared that. You average average be six? <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to You're not going <laughs> to spoil it for him. So, Ike, how about Harvard, your rating for him for the day? Well, Harvard? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will leave him at six, seven, seven, seven. Okay, seven for Harvard. Uh, Nick, your rating for Harvard? Yeah, yeah same as Werner. You know, do uh, f uh, do much really. Uh, I will give him a seven, I suppose. Okay, a seven. Uh, Declared Harvard. Yeah, he sh uh, not one of his best games. Uh, he struggled, but he did a lot. I think I can't give him a seven though. Six for me. Well, okay. And how about you, Mighty? Your rating for Harvard? I rate Harvard highly. He's one of my favourite players at the moment for Chelsea, but I think he was very shy yesterday, so I'll say six. Okay, I think the average is seven, but I get your uh, I get your argument there. I, I think with that, uh, I think we've come to the end of the show. Uh, again, we've streaming for. Uh, three hours and 15 minutes, but let me just quickly, your final thoughts on everything we've talked about today, uh, Maddie? Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, we've got to move on. Uh, we've got to move on. Hopefully, we'll get a um, an owner on Wednesday because uh, it's apparently come out on Twitter that we could have a new owner on Wednesday um, <laughs> as early as Wednesday, so let's hope so, eh? Um, and yeah, Maddie, let's, we, we, um, we've heard that a lot, haven't we? Oh, do you know what? Yeah, I, we always I, I, get, we always get the uh, uh, good news, then it becomes bad news. Do you but know but what? It's I, been oh, it's next week <laughs> and next week on Twitter, yeah, and oh, I'm going to hear this. And I, I don't think we're going to get a new one on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> really declared. I swear to God, mate. When we were doing, when we were doing Gem Show, when we first, when we, when this whole news was coming out, I swear to God, yeah. I said. We're going to be one step closer. We're going to be one step closer. And this was at the start of March. <laughs> We're now at nearly the end of April. And I feel, oh, like, no. I've aged, I feel like I've aged. Can, can we do years. something quickly? <laughs> do something uh, quickly, quickly. Ma Maddie, after you've yeah, done giving time. me your final thoughts, what's your rating, rating for t uh, uh, Captain America? Do I have to give one? <laughs> Do I yeah, have please. To? <laughs> please, we have to. He, he thought he got out of it pretty good. <laughs> yeah, we have to. <laughs> oh, mate. Um, I guess a seven because he got a goal. So, yeah, that's all you're going to get from me is a seven. <laughs> He's an impact okay. player. Uh, uh, okay. Um, Declare your final thoughts on everything we've talked about and your rating for Captain America. Um, to be to be fair, I, I missed a lot. Sorry, I'm glad that I was out. We talked um, about the news that there's a chance there's another phase of beating, which includes, uh, I think, what was it about? I think it has to do with. Okay, let's let, more important. We talked about the commitment uh, by the owners to you know they must not sell anything, sell the club until 2033 or so, a certain, and then. That you have to see it's part of the contract so that it's legally binding, so they, they're not going to sell any shares of the club until 2023 or so. Uh, that That's official, they agree to that. Is that one of the conditions? Yeah, yeah, it's out. Let me see if I can show it to you here quickly. I don't think I still have it open, but go ahead. If I find it, I'll show it to you. I think it's from the government, so, actually. I think it is there. Um, I think I might have sent it to you, actually. 
Yeah, you did. Yeah, that was one one of the ones I opened. Uh, so wait, so if they do very poorly and we want them out, that we can't even get them. Like, say, if we're just protesting every season, that we can't even get them out. If you wanted to get them out, and that's another way to see it. But then again, I, this is to avoid them just coming in and then having to put us through the process of selling the club again because they see somebody who wants to buy it off of them for a bigger amount of money and something like that. I, I just don't know what to say about it, but go ahead. Yeah, I can say that. Mm-hmm. Um, the in terms of the in terms of the process, I'm not surprised. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just like how Maddie touched on. It was it was wasn't that long ago that we were just saying, yeah, this is you know, it's going to be concluded. Uh, and and I still think that it's going to be concluded close to the license date, which is in May, end of May. And I think end mm-hmm. of May when the season's about concluded, I think that's when we'll hear our news. Um. Which is kind of ridiculous on this process. Mm-hmm. This, this process must be, unless unless Romans make a huge limb to jump. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we, we just want with the news about Rudiger, uh, and now and now I'm pretty sure, sure Christensen was gone. Um, there could be question marks with some other players as well. Uh, I, I believe that Lukaku, Werner would, would push. Maybe even Ziyech might want to go. Uh, players now might look at this opportunity because it's a reset, right? Um, when mm. new owners come in, Tuchel gets a clean slate and maybe Tuchel gets more more in favour. So if if players were lingering around and hoping maybe Tuchel drops out and then we get a new manager or Tuchel has to use them, mm. uh, usually that, that's in favour. And Tuchel doesn't have much, much pull. So, mm. you know, an- another bad season, Tuchel could be out. That's how That's how some players look at it. You know what I mean? Next season can start, and you're there on the bench, and then Tuchel has a bad start, and then midway, Tuchel's gone. And, and that's how this club operates, and, that, and that's how it used to operate, actually. And that's how they used to um, used to look at it. That's how players look at it. But now it's all reset. So Tuchel gets some leeway, and the player goes, well, I can't just stick around and wait for this, for him to, you know, how the new owners feel about him. So mm. that's why a lot of players might put their hand up uh, early. Just like Rudiger did. But we, with Rudiger, uh, just like we argued a long time ago, um, if he's, he's turned down a 230 and everyone was saying that he should he deserve 200. And I was saying that if it was 200, I can see that happening. But I felt he always was asking 250 plus And he's looking for money. And there's also a good correlation with majority of athletes, not just Rudiger, right? When it comes to close to their contract, they perform, the, you know, some of their best football or best best play, best whatever, right? They perform William at the level. Yeah, William does it. A lot of players do it and, and, and different sports. It's not just down to Rudiger, right? <clears throat> so there's a good chance that Rudiger might digress in, in his performances once he gets a contract from anywhere, even with us. So people don't think it's all over, right? And the only positive I can – losing him for free is one of the worst things. But the, the positive as well, I still believe that uh, the core of our team is at an age where when they peaked, Rudiger might have been too old and we wouldn't, it wouldn't be – we wouldn't enjoy his, his talent uh, at that age. So maybe, maybe losing him now and getting, getting a new back line, which is, which is kind of sad as well because we had a back line. We had, we had a Cobham solution. You know, Tamori, Chalaba, Gehi, we, we had a solution there already. And now uh, it's going to look a it, it could be. And what's sad is that everyone's talking about too many rice. It, it could be a, a preseason where we just buy a new defense and no one else, really, which is kind of sad. Um, but I'm hoping for, I'm hoping Chelsea to be one of the busiest teams um, in, in the transfer window. I hope our owner comes in. I hope he gives a lot of trust to Tuchel. Uh, I hope we continue, because if you guys remember, uh, Kunde deal was pretty much almost done, and that can continue straight away quick. Uh, we were out for Hakimi. Hakimi was pretty much done. It, it was just a matter, choose us or PSG, right? And, and you can't blame the club for that, because they did all they can. It's up to the player mm-hmm. at that point. So they must. those are the ones reported, right? There's a lot more players that were approached, and maybe the deal... Uh, the deal didn't didn't go through. So there's deals that they can 
pick up and, and go again from a lot of players. And, bef- and with Conor Gallagher, Brozier, uh, this team can look very different and, and exciting. I think we can have an exciting preseason, something to get really uh, behind. I know we lose Roman, but something really exciting might be left behind. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the FA Cup and that. So that's how I'm looking at new owners. And, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and given uh, uh, since you talked about it, the top, the, the Kunde or oh, the Kunde, uh, I think uh, according to reports, says he wants to join Chelsea, uh, even though Manchester United also wants him. Uh, that's some good news. Uh, but that's by the way. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to come, Nick. I'll let you be the last to round off. I'm going to come to uh, Ike. Ike, over to you. Your final thoughts on everything we talked about and your rating for Christian Pulisic. Yeah, um, my, first of all, my, my rating for Christian Pulisic, he, he just, I, I like him as a player. He plays good, but most of the time, his level of consistency, it doesn't help him. He plays well today. The following day, he, he's not doing nothing. So that's why you see most of the time, he's the first person like a victim when the team is not doing well. So that is how I see him. But for yesterday, coming in and putting that shape that was beautiful. So I give him seven. So um for okay. my last thoughts for my last thoughts on, on this program, I just wish this um this whole ownership team is solved on time so Chelsea can go back to their normal operations and all that. So let us see if we still have a chance to persuade Rudiger to stay. Because like mm-hmm. you said, it is not all done and dusted that he's going to Real Madrid. So if we can sort out this ownership team, somebody can come in to say, okay, fine, what do you want? What do you need? Whatever Real Madrid is giving you, I give it to you. But that has a lot of implication because players are running out of contract. If you give everybody what they want, everybody will come with their request. And at the end yeah. of the day... It's such a dangerous precedent. Yeah, at the end of the day, that is dangerous. So that is why I don't believe in giving players whatever they want. It should be, this is what we want to offer. So well, if you accept it, fine. If you don't accept it, fine. No player is bigger than the club. After Rudiger, Chelsea exists. With Rudiger, Chelsea exists. So I love him. I want him to stay. But if he chooses to go to Real Madrid for family's sake, for his sake, because he's only, he's only, um, yeah, he's only, um, yeah, he's on, he's on the spot where time is limited. He doesn't have too much time. He's 29. He's two in few years time. He's done. So he needs money to take care of himself and his family. So I don't blame him. If he wants to go, oh, fine. If mm-hmm. he wants to stay, yeah, I love uh, great, great deal right there for you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. that is, I want them to start yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and uh, from the Queen of the House, uh, sorry to see that you're leaving right now. Uh, again, uh, good luck with uh, whatever you're going to do. Always nice uh, to have you in the house. Yep, and uh, and uh, Choma says, take care, V. Yep, thank you very much for saying that. Uh, v, you're very loved here. You're one of the queens of the house. And uh, by the way, I think I'm going to make uh, Choma uh, a moderator. Uh, yeah, just because she's my sister. And I know some people wouldn't like that, but I just did. Uh, Chama is a moderator now. And with that, I uh, think, uh, Nick, coming to you, you have the final thoughts on everything we've talked about and your rating for Christian Pulisic. And by the way, I'm going to override everybody's ratings and I'm going to attach a Christian Pulisic ratings to the uh, snippet of, of the ratings uh, board. And I'm going to give him a 20 out of 10. So, Nick, go ahead. <laughs> Tell yeah. us what you think, your thoughts on everything we've talked about yeah, today, well, and your rating well, for Christian Pulisic. Yeah, Captain America, yeah, definitely gets a eight. Yeah, for scoring the goal, so he has to get an eight at least. Um, but if we give a Pulisic, we don't give Lukaku and Ziyech. That's a bit strange. Hmm. So, I'll give all three of them eight, eight each. Okay, all the subs. Yeah, all three of them because they want us to Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, Yeah, we talked a lot about about the stadium again. We keep repeating ourselves, probably, about the stadium. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's no guarantee what's to happen, so we're just speculating and, uh, you know. Yeah. For me, you know what I think about it. I don't want to go into it again. Because mm-hmm. you know, I'm very strongly against moving from the bridge. 
Mm -hmm. you know? And um, yeah, about the uh, the Peters, let's, let's hope it's next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Or this Wednesday, some people are saying. I don't think it will be. It won't be. It will probably be near the end of the season. Um, I hope it will be. Then we really mm -hmm. could well stay. If you know, you never know. He hasn't signed that uh, dotted line for Real Madrid yet. Um, I hope he changes his mind and says. I think that's a big, a big issue now. Very big issue because we don't have any replacement out there. There's no one. Mm. To come in and replace Rudiger, no, no, there's no one in the world right now. He's the best, uh, you know, what he does. Him and uh, Thiago Silva. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think Silva's going to miss him a lot. They got, you know, because they play so good with each other. Uh, yeah, it's a shame, but let's let's hope something happens. We we need some good news for a change. I'm fed up with all this bad news, Sanchez mm -hmm. and uh, Roman and. The play uh, and the team, and you can see in the first half yesterday, you know, why they perform like this because he's finally caught up, caught up with us. All the sanctions, all the problems, even with Tuchel, you can see he's not the same. He doesn't look the same because you know everything catches up with you. Too many things going on. You know when you don't know who your owner is and you the one you will, you know who you knew is gone. Uh, who brought you to the club? It's not very nice. Yeah. So I understand the team. So I don't, you know, I wouldn't go into them too much when they don't play well, because it's only they're only humans. But uh, oh, I think we have to go and beat United, just to stop all the speculation that we're we're going to fight for fourth place with Arsenal. <laughs> so we have to beat yeah. United to uh, guarantee the third spot. Then we can concentrate on Liverpool, and we need some form for that Liverpool game. It's, it's not open. it's only two weeks away for the final, so we need to get uh, get going. Where yeah, thank you very much, uh, Nick. You still saying something? No, that's yeah, that's it. Everything. Okay, yeah, thank you very much, yeah. Nick. And with that, I want to say uh, thank you to everybody on the panel. As you can see, you can see their uh, Twitter handle. Uh, please do follow them, and also. I want to thank uh, uh, CFC. Maddie. it's been an honor having you on the panel. And I hope you come back again. I want to say thank you to Declad. Uh, I like to fight with you, but uh, you arrived for the fight late today. I want to also thank Nick and everybody else for always uh, finding time to uh, 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 for always finding a time to support uh, the show. And Ike, I appreciate you finding time to join today. I know this is your first time on the panel here. I hope you come back again. And with that, everybody in the chat, Glenn, Glenn, I hope if you went for a second surgery, I hope it went well. And, and you know we love you here. Uh, Steve Chelsea, uh, and again, uh, uh, Bobby Fev, you always supporting the channel. Uh, Chairman, one name I appreciate seeing you here. Steve, one name I appreciate seeing you here. Josh, you are the queen of the house. I appreciate seeing you here. Hans Master also, and everyone else uh, that has been here. Uh, queen of all streams herself was here. Uh, I appreciate you, Chronos. Dan, everybody else, and if I missed you, then my apologies. I am only a human. And with that, I say thank you for another Blue Morning Show. And if I'm able to host one tomorrow before I travel, it will be earlier. But you guys will find out if you are if you have the, your notification bell uh, turned on, you will find out if I'll do a stream uh, tomorrow before I travel. With that, I say thank you to everyone. I appreciate your support. See you guys next time, and cheers. Bye.